Welcome to Imola for the European <laughs> Le Mans race. Here it's a really amazing. The 4 hours endurance race is going to start right now, so please enjoy the show. And now you're going to know everything about this amazing race with our speaker, Andrew. Thanks very much, uh, Karine. Well, this is an amazing place with all the history. And here we are down on the grid with 37 cars about to line up in the three different categories. The slowest of those is a GTC. And here, the Ferrari number 60, the surprise pole position man and the young Danish driver, Mack, who we remember racing in uh, British Formula, British Base Formula 2 category a couple of years ago, he put it on the pole and that was something of a surprise. Let's see how they get on. We did hear, and I don't know if you can just see it on the second row of the grid, the uh, Signatech uh, car, they're obviously going to be one of the front runners, but we understand that there was a big problem with the engine, there was lots of laptops plugged in, and uh, worried faces, but they seem to have sorted that now as far as I can see. On the pole position, just as it was a year ago, the Jota Motorsport Zytec, and just coming off the uh, jacks there, down onto the new Dunlop soft tyre, which all but one of the prototypes the LMP2 cars will run on. And that car will uh, be started, I believe, by... Uh, Gonzalez, so uh, we'll have to see what happens there. Sorry, uh, not by Gonzalez, by Harry Ticknell. Uh, Harry Ticknell will start that car. Felipe Albuquerque will go in second, and Asylum Dolan, who of course crashed out of the Silverstone race when about to snatch the lead, he uh, will go in third. Another surprise, pole position number 81 in the GTE class, Crisoni. Mario Cressoni, Matteo Cressoni, I should say, who, uh, well, maybe better known for racing a Ginetta around places like uh, Nürburgring, Dubai, and the 24 hour races. But Cressoni put in a, a sterling lap there for um, Ronnie Kessel's team. So it'll be interesting to see if he can uh, hold off the likes of Matt Griffin and uh, Bertolini. Some uh, big names SMP Racing and uh, Bertolini. Definitely will be quick. Uh, the Russian Zlobin will start the car. So, a very warm day here. Quite a lot of strategy will go on. Can they double stint the tyres? That will be one issue. How far can they make the fuel go? Michael Lyons, uh, son of uh, the well known historic racer Frank Lyons. Michael is a young charger, and we're expecting him to go very well in that. Ferrari. Ferrari is numerically by far the largest on the grid in both the GTE and a GCC classes. A few minutes to go. Grid being cleared of uh, personnel. There, Capillaire, the uh, bronze driver for Sebastian. Uh, Seb Sebastian's team there, the number 24 car of uh, Vincent. Capillier for Sebastian Loeb racing. I don't believe Sebastian Loeb's here today. And he is the only one starting on the Michelin tyres. 
in the LMP2 category. Everybody else is now on the Dunlops. And uh, congratulations to uh, their engineer, Mike McGregor, has done a great job with that tyre. Of course, in the LMP1 category with the factory teams, they all run on Michelin. So most of the uh, most of the Ferraris running on Michelin. There's the number 29 car, Pegasus Racing, the uh, car which is badged as a Morgan, but is actually an Onroak chassis. Julian Shell is the team owner there. Jonathan Coleman will start the car. We're expecting in the commentary box a little later some um, big name guests, including, I hope, uh, Alan McNish, who uh, is here helping uh, Felipe Albuquerque, an Audi driver on loan, of course, and uh, just getting a bit of extra experience. Matt Murphy, youngest man in the race, 16 years old, the Arizona schoolboy. Tomorrow he's going to get on the plane and he's got his books because he is cramming for an exam just a few days before he gets back. We're expecting three drivers in that car, but uh, Greaves team uh, were informed that uh, Chris Dyson got too many business uh, worries. I don't know if they were worries, but business opportunities to sort out back in uh, New York State, so he hasn't come. The Momo sponsorship there on the uh, Frank Mayo machine, which uh, will be started by his uh, co-driver. Look at the uh, 43 car, the new blood by Moran Racing. Christian Kleon, former Grand Prix driver, one of the uh, drivers in that three car lineup. Most of the teams are relying on three cars, and about eight or nine of them will run only two. That makes a little bit difference to the drive times. There is the Orica. Gonzalez will start that car, the Murphy car, and Nathaniel Berthon making his uh, sports car debut. Still doing GP2, of course, a very fast Frenchman. He was quick in uh, practice. He joins that team. And uh, some issues with Tor Graves, who was expected to, to drive it. Karun Chandok also for the Greg Murphy machine. Here's the car that had the problems early on and uh, just uh, getting ready. And uh, Nelson uh, Panciatici, Nelly P, as he uh, lets us call him, will start that car. Cameramen marching to the front of the grid. Another Morgan. Nissan, right at the front of the field. We're going to the sharp end now, just looking down in the cockpit of these cars. Remember, they will have to stop at least four times during the four hours, and maybe a fifth time for a splash of fuel. But there is a great shot of the pole sitter, the 38, Yota Motorsport from uh, southern England, based in the little village of France, actually based on a farmyard. Um, out in the countryside on the Kent Sussex border, Yota Motorsport with the Tim Holloway designed Zytec. Here's the driver classification uh, from uh, Silverstone and uh, Baddy, Thierry and uh, Gomedy, of course, uh, winning that. And uh, they, of course, topped the table. Early days, five rounds only and all count. There are uh, the GT ca classification, Duncan Cameron, uh, Matt Griffin, uh, and uh, Rugolo, who's not driving today, uh, they will uh, be in that car. There's the GTC class classification per Guidi, who's not driving today with the two R Ukrainian drivers. That car has uh, been withdrawn. Obviously, some political issues going on in, uh, in, uh, in Ukraine at the moment, I'm sure you're all aware of, and that meant that the car couldn't come, which is it's a great uh, sadness, really staged such a terrific battle with the uh, Russian SMP car in uh, the opening round at Silverstone. As I said, five rounds here, everyone to count, and very important for that uh, pole position, Zytec, because it didn't score any points in the opening round. It was on the pole last year, it was leading the race, and uh, in the last 35, 40 minutes, it uh, had a problem with, um, I think it might have been the wiring last year. So, see, air temperature, a very pleasant 23 degrees C. 
looking back down this uh, curved, unusually curved grid here on this uh, terrific circuit with all its history. So one minute to go before they uh, get rolling. Officials march off the grid. So quite a mixture of uh, starting uh, drivers here. Some of the uh, less experienced bronze entrepreneur stroke gentleman drivers, but mainly they're using their golds or platinum to start the race. So it be interesting to see what sort of uh, mix we have early on here. One of the big, big issues here at Imola for the LMP2 cars is overtaking the uh, faster GT cars. There's a lot of speed down the straights in those GT cars. Of course, they don't go around the corners so quickly, but uh, getting past, well, talking to uh, Felipe Albuquerque, who put that 25s ago, he said there's only really two, maybe three places where you can get by them. Off they roll then, getting ready for four hours of racing. And as I said, Silverstone round at the finish was just a gap of four seconds between the, uh, the winners but it was also uh, under five seconds in the GTE and seven and a half seconds in the GTC, all three categories very close. Trying to get some temperature into these tires, but they are running on the softs amongst the uh, prototypes. Harry Tinknell will start the Yota Sport car, which of course had a great run in the Spa WEC round a couple of uh, weeks ago, going through the grid there. And Capillier and uh, Cressoni on row five, that's where the split is. And uh, again, Duncan Cameron, who uh, is worth well over 100 million, I'm told, is uh, starting that car as he owns it. Lawson, uh, in the form of the race, is a very rich guy. Rob Golf, of course, owns a collection of golf racing machines, including a 917 Porsche. He will start that car. Quite a lot of these uh, silver drivers starting. Good to see so many Russian drivers out there. Mika Salo, expect to see him making some progress through the field. So we go back to the final few rows of the grid. So the three categories, the uh, regulations are set so that the, uh, the gentle, so-called gentleman entrepreneur drivers, I like to call them, that own these cars, get more time in the cars than the uh, pros. Some controversy about some of the gradings of the drivers, it has to be said. Rodolfo Gonzalez, who drives for Murphy, is a, is a silver, for instance, and he's got a super license and uh, is tested for Marussia, so quite sure how they work it out. I am expecting that uh, early on we could see the, uh, the 25... Uh, Zytec car starting to uh, go away from the field. 38 Zytec car, I should say. Behind the pace car now. Everybody uh, in good order at the moment. Doesn't seem to be any problem with that 36 machine where they were scrabbling around on the grid. Quite narrow, this uh, Imola racetrack, when you consider you held all those... Uh, Formula One uh, races, I think it must have been 25 or so of them. So, will the pace car pull off? Yes, it does at the very last moment. And uh, everybody getting ready to go. Hearts pounding now. Green flag waving back there. As they come round the uh, left-hander, which is part of the pits complex, quite unusual here, waiting for that uh, flag. And Harry Ticknell, the only his third drive in a prototype, raced in the uh, Formula 3 European Championship last year. He gets a very good start indeed, and the, uh, the French uh, Alpine Reno seem to make a good start into second place. And Murphy's down the inside, but no, and the Thierry car is right there as well in third. And the Murphy car is in fourth position. But what a flying start there for uh, Harry Tinknell from Exeter in Devon down there in the southwest of England. Driver who's been mentored by Alan McNish. 
this uh, circuit, which has got all this elevation change. And the Castle Ferrari is still leading uh, in the GT from the SMP car. And uh, here they go up the hill. I'm trying to look at it. Bit of a challenge on the Murphy, but no, has to uh, drop back there. Good run going from a new blood by Moran. On the opening lap of this race then. And getting that to first lap into the box here. Ticknell in the lead from Fancy a Tichy. Baddy in the third place, then Gonzalez for Murphy, then Fry, then uh, Matt McMurray. What a tall order for the young 16-year-old to start this race. Then Gary Hirsch, then Coleman, and Capillier, and then Crisoni is uh, hanging on from pole position from Zlobin. Michael Lyons is up to fourth place in that category. In the GTC, as uh, we got almost a touch there, and Murphy challenging, and Murphy, what a great drive by the Murphy machine. And he goes through, and uh, Gonzalez certainly uh, charging hard and passes a buddy there, who is there, Silver, but he's a talented runner. And Murphy up into third place. Let's see it again. Well, maybe, did they touch? Oh, not quite, but uh, Buddy had to take a bit of avoiding action there. So, change for third place. Fastest sector time, the first section for uh, Hirsch in the Moran machine. Bit of dirt kicked up. Going back down amongst the uh, Ferraris. Five of Marinello's finest all in a line there. Pegasus Racing in eighth place. The Sebastian Loeb car in ninth. Very good job so far from uh, Crisoni. So there. Gonzalez. Lots of single-seater experience. In the uh, third spot now for... Greg Murphy's team. And battle towards the back of that class. Stop go penalty for number 76, presumably for a jump start. And that's the IMSA performance of Porsche, of uh, Armindo in Iraq. David Alliday also in that car. So, Harry Ticknell, refugee from uh, Formula 3 racing, in the lead. And uh, he's starting to pull away just half a second from uh, Nelly P. Rodolfo Gonzalez, the uh, Venezuelan driver, for Murphy in third place. Whoa, look at this. And, uh, well, Hirsch moving up there past uh, Buddy. There's uh, Crisoni. And uh, Crisoni has pulled away. That's, what a big surprise there. Crisoni pulling away in the uh, GTE category. Ticknell. Panciatici, Gonzalez, Buddy, Hirsch. I think I saw uh, I see I saw Hirsch going past Buddy. I think maybe it swapped back again. Yeah, it has. You see it on your screen now. So in the lead, Harry Ticknell, who was a, a winner 
in uh, the FIA Formula 3 European Championship last year. Finished about fifth or sixth in the championship at the end, if I remember. Here's replay of the uh, rolling start as they got underway. New leader in uh, GTC, which is the 95, and it had to be the man that's the uh, real tongue twister, Cedric Spirazzioli, who I think is uh, fairly local to this track. Need to check that out. Battle for first position. And uh, certainly uh, Ticknell coming under a bit of pressure, but uh, putting a fastest lap of the race thus far on the previous lap. But look at it now, look at that gap. And the uh, champion from last year, Alpine uh, Renault, which is actually, I think, under the clothing, and uh, Orica. There's the Murphy car in third. Bit of light flashing going on from uh, Baddy in the Tyria by TDS. Remember, that's the car which uh, won the opening round after Simon Dolan uh, hit the barriers. And uh, Mast uh, Ferraris here. In the GTC class, there are a couple of McLarens. And uh, well, we had an incident there with the uh, 65 car. And that's the AF Corsa machine, Peter Mann, Lorenzo Casse, and Rafael Guillermaria. So, Pensia Ticci has actually closed up a little bit on Tinknell at the front. Should mention um, an interesting driver in the 58. And uh, football fans will know who he is because he kept goal for France. Bathiez. Fabien Bathiez played for Man United as well for a while. And uh, great racing between the two Ferraris here. And uh, I think it's young Michael Lyons there really pushing uh, Zlobin. Crisoni still leading that uh, category. Crisoni, Zlobin and Lyons, they're the top three. There's the uh, gap between them. And Michael Lyons, who started his career just age 16, in a, I think it was a historic Formula 2 car. Raced a lot of historic Formula 1 cars with great success, but now finding a, a career as a, a modern machinery driver in the GT. Meanwhile, uh, look at Murphy still under pressure here. Gonzalez being chased by uh, Baddy and Hirsch. Or Hirsch and Baddy it is. And certainly the Miranda, the Pegasus car, I should say. Sorry, Pegasus car going pretty well. And uh, that's the... Matt McMurray car, Matt McMurray, Jonathan Coleman and Campellier there racing for 7th, 8th and 9th. I would say Murray, McMurray, son of Chris McMurray, well known in the American Le Mans series in uh, prototypes and uh, Dyson development driver. There's a light flashing going on here amongst the uh, battling Ferraris. There's the GTE classification, Kessel, SMP, AF course, second of the Kessel cars. And a good move there. On uh, Brozjewski. Ticknell though, hanging on and uh, Nelly P pushing him hard. Gonzalez still in third place. Early going here. First of pit stops amongst the prototypes. Probably come after about 45 minutes. And Aston Martin just being uh, 
lap there. I think that Aston must be in a bit of a problem. Road Golf's car. So there is the lone Aston. Aston, of course, very successful in the WC. We've got a BMW out there. We've got a couple of McLarens. We've got uh, Alex Brundle driving one of them. So the gap, just 1.5 seconds. But the leading two pulled away a bit. Still that battle going on between Greaves, Pegasus and uh, Loeb. But uh, what a job Crisoni is doing. Not one of the really favoured Ferrari drivers like uh, Bertolini or Matt Griffin. And uh, Crisoni brought in more or less at the last moment by uh, Kessel Racing, Ronnie Kessel. And doing a very good job indeed. Seeing that uh, BMW is down there in about 28th place. And that Aston Martin. Right near the back, 37 starters, remember here. But uh, certainly good Ferrari battles in this first 15 minutes. So passing entry to uh, the pit lane and head towards the uh, Tamburello. And up towards the uh, very anti Villeneuve. Curb hopping there. And then they'll come to the tightest corner. Tosa. Start to climb up the hill. To the uh, Piratella. Which has uh, got some difficult camber on it. They are going up the hill. And uh, Cressoni continuing to lead, but uh, Michael Lyons has worked his way up into uh, second place now. And uh, now we're getting uh, the LMP2s already lapping some of the uh, GTCs and uh, working through traffic. The Signatech uh, making an advantage of that. He closes right up on Tinknell. And they go round the Aston Martin. And uh, look at the Signatech car. He's going to make a dive for it, but he can't. And they have to thread their way so carefully through these uh, GTCs. And now the Signatech car of uh, Nelly P is right on the uh, rear brake lights of uh, Harry Tinknell in the Yota Zytec. And uh, we thought that lapping traffic would uh, certainly be a major factor in this race. It already proved to be the case. And now just 0.1 of a second between uh, Panciatici and uh, Tinknell. So you go up over the hill. Under that uh, scaffolding bridge. And uh, it looks as if uh, Tinknell is using more curb than uh, the uh, Alpine Renault. Crisoni still leading uh, GTE from Lions. Spirazzioli leading the GTC category. A replay here. And, uh, now the traffic probably working a bit in the favour of Tignall. And will the uh, Signatec car get through? No, he's, uh, there he's held up. And uh, those Ferraris cannot carry so much speed through the corners as the LMP2 cars. And now he looks down the uh, inside. There's the three category leaders for you. And now they've got a couple of Porsches which are gonna be in the way. And this is how it's gonna be for the rest of the race.
Yeah, what a what a battle amongst these uh, GTs. Those Ferraris sounding absolutely brilliant. Remember last year it was the uh, Ram Racing uh, entry of Johnny Molan and Matt Griffin who won the GTE here for uh, Ram Racing team. Matt now back with his regular team. Hey, of course, although of course the uh, Ram team from Silverstone have moved up into the WEC. Had to miss the uh, second round, bit of a budget problem there. They will be at Le Mans and announcing a couple of uh, late driver changes just in the past week. And now they got 0.7 of a second and already these two have uh, dropped uh, the Murphy car in uh, third place. Reeves uh, in seventh with uh, Matt McMurray. And they're just seeing uh, Matt McMurray. And battles all uh, up the field. And again, getting mixed up with all the uh, GT cars. Reeves car still uh, carrying the colours of uh, Caterham. There was a tie-up with the Caterham Car Company for a while. There's the Barwell BMW going through. Still the Caterham name on the side of the Greaves iTech. Jacob Greaves running that car, second generation team owner. So, in the lead, Harry Tignall for Jota Motorsport, Jota Sport. And just look how they have to pick their way so carefully through these uh, GT cars. Past the uh, Golf. Liveried Porsche. She's got some uh, strong drivers in that car. They uh, include uh, Adam Carroll and, and Ben Barker, who, uh, Ben, oh, the car just uh, twitching a little bit. And uh, Michael Wainwright, the uh, owner of that car. Past the start finish line once again. And uh, Ticknell been working through the traffic a little bit better than uh, Panciatici. Just watching uh, Matt McMurray again. M M McMurray being hassled there by uh, Jonathan Coleman. Good to have him back. In racing, he's had a bit of a, a tough time in the last three or four years, driving for the family-owned Pegasus team. All these LMP2 cars are, are competitive. Signal in the lead then. From uh, Panciatici, Gonzalez. In the Orica. Oh, what a bit of real curb hopping there. And uh, Crisoni coming under a bit of pressure from Lions. Felipe Albuquerque will be racing for Audi at Le Mans. Well, a year ago, he would have been at the uh, DTM race. Three years in the DTM uh, series, and there's one of the two ART. Uh, McLaren's run by Frederick Vasseur are just being lapped. And you saw on your caption the, the lead and uh, certainly Ticknell who of course in Formula 3 racing as he flashes his lights out at the SMP Ferrari 
Formula 3 race didn't do very little lapping, although there's big fields of 30 odd cars, most of them are, are pretty close together. So working through the traffic is pretty new to him, but with his mentor, Alan McNish, I'm sure has been talking to him about techniques. There's Cressoni. We'll uh, hand the car over later uh, to Kremita. I'm not sure how quick he is, certainly not the same speed as uh, Cressoni who has built up a uh, decent uh, lead over Michael Lyons. The sign of Lyons has been working his way through the field. There the castle car. Which has been, uh, pleased to say, engineered by uh, a lady engineer. Marshall's having to work hard here. battle between the sixth and seventh place car, the Jim McWhirter's car, who for all those years ran on Dunlop tyres. And uh, make a bit of a challenge around the inside, and that's what you have to be so careful of in these uh, sports prototypes. And if, again, threading their way through. And uh, using the traffic, and then the uh, two Ferraris side by side, of course, and just holding up uh, Nelson. Now he finds a way past. Jay, MW Motorsport with their uh, yellow Ferrari, Daniel McKenzie, George Richardson, and Daniel. Zampieri are the three drivers in that. Pretty new lineup for um, Jim McWhirter. Back with a quick shot of Matt McMurray. Jonathan Coleman still there chasing our trim. Interesting to see that uh, Gary Hirsch in the 43 uh, Morgan has uh, just put in the fastest uh, sector one time. So. Uh, Maybe he'll make a bit of a move. Tickno lapping down to the, the 139s. 14 laps in the book thus far. And they got 1.2 seconds. Again, the gap between McMurray and Coleman. Maybe surprisingly, the Tyrier by TDS Racing car back there in fifth place at the moment, backed by the uh, chain of uh, frozen food shops in France. Pierre Tyrier, the son of the founder of that uh, very successful business. Well, isn't one of the uh, Porsches off and back on again. Quite a lot of dust being kicked up around here. We're going to see a replay of that. Well, managed to sort it out. And here's that battle going on for uh, eighth and ninth overall. Eighth and ninth in the class. Back with the leaders then. And uh, Ticknell, Mancia Ticci, and uh, they continue to uh, pull away. Rossoni still leading in a GTE and GTC, got a new leader. And uh, it's one of the uh, lady gins there, the Russians who uh, have raced together in the past. So it's a 73 car of Anton Legin and uh, Olivier Barretto will be getting in that later. And uh, Barretto with a huge amount of success for Corvette and for Dodge Viper in the past. 
the Monegas driver. And uh, the bronze driver in that car is David uh, Markasov from Russia. I'm still seeing this, uh, this battle towards the back of the LMP2. And uh, the uh, McLaren just being passed at the moment. Ricardo uh, Gonzalez of Mexico, Karim uh, Ajani, and uh, Alex Brundle showing that car. Great shot of the Greaves car. Sometimes run two in this series. They will have two at Lamar, I'm told. And the driver lineup, the second car, will be announced in the very near future. And Pancia Dicci, if we go back to the uh, front, just close right up on uh, Tignal. Not sure if that was through traffic. There's the, the view of the houses they get as they plunge down the hill. You almost see people in their front rooms as you plunge down there. Out of our sight, I think one of the Ferraris just to spy. Here we see it. There's the uh, 95 car going. The um, driven by the Belgian driver Adrian Delina. Well, actually, that's Cedric. Uh, that's Cedric uh, Spiritzioli, who uh, was in second place, of course, in that category. It's dropped now down to all fifth. Us right, actually, might be stuck in the gravel because he's dropped right down almost to eighth, ninth place. So, what's happening at the front? Gap still very close indeed, as you can see now. There's the two lead cars, the uh, sandwich, the meat and the Ferrari sandwich. Ticknell using the traffic, but every so often, Fancy Tichi uh, gets a better run past the uh, GT cars and closes up. Sterling stuff here around this uh, famous Imola track. Been racing here for over 60 years. The circuit Enzo and Dino Ferrari. And the Alpine Renault just uh, dies past in the famous colours we used to see on the Alpines at Le Mans, those swooping uh, coupes, the 1960s and early 70s. Renault, of course, subsequently having a lot of success with the likes of Jean-Pierre Jabouy at Le Mans. And uh, this programme, a bit of a toe in the water by Renault. There's Simon Dolan and Felipe Albuquerque in the Jota pit. Simon Dolan, the team owner. He wrote a, a book called How to Be a Millionaire Without Going to University. And uh, he didn't. And he has made very many millions. And uh, these days invested in a lot of companies, some of which he, he found, finds, I believe, through Twitter. So Simon Dolan will be back. will be in that car for the final two or three stints. Harry Tignall there just going around the outside of the Ferrari and it doesn't have that much extra speed as you can see. Down there in the uh, Tamburello. And uh, next place, good place to uh, pass GT cars. Down into the uh, Villeneuve curve. There's uh, the leader of uh, GTC. Chin. And Dr. Steve Burkhall, one of the uh, best known uh, GT uh, engineers, I think is uh, certainly on the engineering team of that uh, SMP racing organization from Russia. 
And Burkle knows a thing too about setting these cars up. There's the GTC classification. And uh, see the McLaren up there in second place with uh, De Moustier, who uh, had a good result uh, very recently in one of those cars, not in this championship. Gregoire De Moustier. The balance of performance going on in that, uh, that GT. C category. I'm not quite sure whether they've given the McLaren a bit of a break. So Dola just goes past the uh, 73 car. UTC leader. It's a Dolan's car, driven by Ticknell. With the uh, colours of the Russian flag. A lot of Russian drivers coming up through the uh, Ferrari Challenge, which is uh, mainly based in Italy. We've got uh, also had the Ukrainians, of course, who had the success game very wide there. The uh, Russian driven car. We've also got a couple of drivers from Belarus here. So, totally international field. And the gap between Ticknell and Panciatici. Just a 0.7 of a second at the moment. And uh, what's going on down in that pit? We have Corsa. Oh, the, uh, the 95 uh, goes for a spin. And uh, that's the, that happened quite a few minutes ago, that particular spin. That's the uh, Spirazzioli car. She dropped him down the field. And there's the 99 McLaren. And uh, battling with the uh, 94 car. They're, uh, they're racing for second place in GTC. Castellacci driving that 94, that uh, grey silver car. Francesco Castellacci. Races mainly Italian GTs. He's driving with a Swiss gentleman called uh, Thomas Fleur, who uh, I believe owns a fleet of uh, jets which he rents out. But, uh, we'll see him later. I wonder how high he'll be flying. But this, uh, very much the uh, feature story of this race so far with this uh, battle between these two. Just over. Half an hour in. Three hours, 20 odd minutes still to go. So the LMP2 drivers coming towards the end of their stint. And having to really work hard for it. There's the Momo sponsorship on the uh, Race performance car, the Orica of uh, Frank Mayo and uh, Michel Fry. Michel at the wheel. Frank Mayo will uh, be rowing that one along a little bit quicker than that. Look at one of the boat up. And there we've got a Porsche. Uh, sure why he's making that pit stop. Maybe he has a bit of a problem. Don't expect him in for another 25 minutes or so. So I think that'll be some mechanical issue. Swiss race performance team are there. Orica Judge. With the Swiss driver, Michel Frey. Again. Technol in the car run by Sam Hingnett. Gap uh, sees it's a bit like a piece of elastic, isn't it? The gap stretched out to 1.6 seconds now, and they are well 16 seconds down the road from the third placed Gonzalez driven Murphy car. And, uh, 
Meanwhile, uh, lots of battles. Buddy and Hirsch having a good scrap. Fry right be behind him. Fry doing a very good job, in fact. Presoni still a very good lead in the uh, GTLM class. Some discussions going on amongst the master hacks of the AF Corsa. Mechanics and Lucifer. We're going to get their goggles down and get ready for a pit stop. There's the Aston again. And those uh, golf colours made so famous by Steve McQueen and his uh, Le Mans film back in 1970. So, the extra racer. Harry Ticknell, pass that Ferrari, and again trying to use the traffic to a good effect in the uh, Zytec car engineered by Tim Holloway, who designed it originally, well, the best part, 10 years ago for uh, Zytec boss Bill Gibson, Gary Hirsch, who uh, currently lying in fifth place. We might be getting a report from the pits in a moment. We got uh, Corrine Lima down there. Corrine, have you got something for us? No, she's just uh, getting the uh, getting the story. Uh, Murphy with their new sponsorship from uh, Hertz. And indeed coming in then, this is the first of the uh, scheduled stops. And the 48 car then heading down this uh, very strange pit lane here. With its uh, elbow as you accelerate out. About to uh, stop there at the feet of uh, Gang of Mechanics led by Roy Hingston. There's the Alpine. Still uh, pounding after Tinknell. There's Tinknell in the Zytec. And there's the 36 uh, Alpine Renault, which I believe. Oh, going a little bit wide. You see how the Ferrari is right up his exhaust as he came out, just making a bit of a mistake there. Drivers with helmets on in the pits now, waiting to uh, take over. We should see uh, a whole flurry of pit stops fairly soon. And. Uh, I suspect that when those tyres come off, the Dunlop engineers are going to rush around and uh, really check them because they are these new soft uh, Dunlops which haven't run uh, in a race before. I'll be interested to see how they're wearing. Murphy car back uh, in the race. Still with the uh, Gonzales. At the wheel. But have to say that Picknell, with very limited experience in these kind of cars, doing an excellent job. There you see the uh, Irish trickler on the front of the car. And in third place, still uh, 
the 46 car of Ludovic Badi. And uh, later to be driven by Pierre Thierry and uh, Tristan Ngomedi, who uh, is the platinum rated driver in that car. You don't have to have a platinum. He, they do have one in Tristan Ngomedi. A lot of single-seater success, as I said before, particularly in the Super League series. Tickno goes past. And uh, I'm going to be joined by a guest now. And uh, you'll be interested to see the cars on. And it's good to see Karun uh, Chandok joining us, who was taking off one headset, which uh, he was hearing from the team, and putting on this headset. And uh, Karun, great to see you here. Thanks very much. You're going to be driving uh, a little bit later in the race. And uh, aren't you all fired up, ready to go? <laughs> but, yeah, well, we just got pit stop here from the second place car. And uh, Pantitichi getting out. And uh, you practice this sort of thing, of course, and uh, how you do the belts up and go work together as a team. First time that they've been raised here. Have you heard anything over the radio how they're working out? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we've done our first stop, and we um, I think uh, we have to change one of the tyres, it's slightly higher wear, but um, uh, I'm not entirely sure to be honest because I was on my way walking on towards hit, you. Yeah. Um, so but um, Jonathan yeah. Coleman just cut in there, young driver. Like some people, done a bit of a hiccup in his career. Nice to see him back in sports car racing, but. Harry Ticknell's got very little experience in these cars, doing a, a really good job out there, quite a bit of pressure, but so much of it is working away through the traffic, isn't it? And here we just see the the uh, the Alpine here, just uh, finding its way past a Yep, so Ferrari. they've got their silver driver in now, Chaton is in the car, so that uh, he's in probably for his long stint, because once again, um, the silver drivers need to do two well, hours, 20 minutes I minimum. I think we can go down to the pits, I think, uh, yes. But so we've got um, we've got Karine Lima down in the pits, and uh, she's going to uh, give us the latest update. So Nelson, can you tell us a uh, world about your race, please? Uh, my first scene was good. I uh, was P3 at the start. After the first corner, I was P2. I was really close from P1, so it's a good scene. I hope Paulo and Olivia will do uh, a good job, and uh, I hope we'll finish on the podium. And it's very hot. You miss the air conditioning. Yeah, it's really hot. The track is really uh, slow, so it's really physical for, for us, but... It's good, um, it's good preparation for Le Mans. Thank you. So, there he is. He did look a bit hot in the face, didn't he? Hard work around here. Yeah, it's warm. Uh, it's almost Indian weather, this Andrew, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it, it is, yeah. So, I mean, uh, I mean, out on track, the track temperature has gone up definitely from, from the last couple of days. I think we're up by about four or five degrees. So, that does affect not only the, the tyres, Andrew, but around here, you know, the, the brakes really get a battering. And because you've got so much traffic, yeah. you haven't got cold air, you're always getting hot air coming off the cars in front of you. As we see Tinknell boxes from the lead, so this is the race leader coming into the pits, which, uh, let's see how that pans out. Yeah, I mean, again, he's got to get out of the car now, because yeah. he's done his one stint. He's done his one stint, and that must be frustrating for you golden platinum drivers, who only do one stint, but Albuquerque is going to get into the car, into the Signatec Alpine, went to their, their silver driver, Paul Luke Chata. No, they've gone for Dolan. Oh, they've gone for Dolan. Well, that wasn't that wasn't their original plan. Oh, was it? Right. No, absolutely not. So uh, they've obviously changed it around a bit. So Dolan's going in for his uh, his long stint now, and I mean, I'm glad to see he's okay after his shunt at Silverstone. Obviously, that's the last time I saw him. And, uh, I'm glad to see he's he's okay after yeah, that because that was a big accident. It was a big accident, and uh, of course they've raced at Spa since, so the team worked really hard to rebuild that car for the WEC round. Mm -hmm. So. For some reason, they, they've changed the strategy. Unless I misheard the strategy, it's always possible, of course. You set the rubber going on. And, uh, so they've gone for a single stint as well on the tyres. Um, I'm just trying to work out, looking at the timing screens at the moment. Now, it looks like our pit stop was... We did a 1 minute 26 for us. Uh, a little bit slower than 
than some of the others. Um, well, we can see, I think, the, the Signatech car did the 134, so they were a bit slower than us as well. Just talk to me a little bit about this uh, Imola track, because compared with Silverstone a few weeks ago, it's so tight, isn't it? It's narrow, yep. it's difficult to overtake. Yeah, it's actually my first time here. I mean, it's is my, it? It, uh, which really? uh, <laughs> sort of a surprise to a lot yeah. of people, really. But um, no, really uh, fantastic circuit, a lot of history, uh, old school circuit. I love tracks like this gravel, grass, you know, proper circuits, old school. None of these stupid tarmac runoffs. I really, I'm not a fan of those. I think this is how circuits should be. Yeah, and of course, elevation changes as well. And you sort of dive down and see the houses. And if, yeah. you, if you really look carefully, you can see some vineyards to the side. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, no, fantastic, fantastic circuit, nice to drive, but very difficult for the traffic because it's so narrow. I'm in everything, Neil, uh, uh, car number 38. How was your stint? Yeah, it was good. Uh, the start was good and uh, the opening laps were, were were pretty good as well. And then once we hit the traffic, um, you know, it sort of ebbs and flows a little bit. Me and Nelson had a few uh, sort of close encounters, but then uh, towards the end of the stint, uh, we managed to pull away. I mean, the... Uh, the, the Jota Zytec car is uh, very, very good on the tyres and then I could pull away towards the end and it was a good stint, so uh, we'll see what time we can do now. Congratulations, thank you. Yeah, I did a very good job, Tick Nolz has been coached by Alan McNish and helped a little bit, I guess. Yeah, indeed. I mean, you can see that Dolan's got all sorts of traffic. I mean, he's, yeah. he's had a terrible outlap because of the traffic, really. It's, made, it's, it's so difficult to get into a rhythm. You know, as soon as you come out of the pits, if you've got all this traffic, I'm sure it's really difficult for him because he's got, I see seven GT cars in that shot, and uh, he's come straight into the middle of that pack, which isn't great as that Ferrari locks up in front of him. Well, the, um, the Tyrrier car seems to be staying out a bit longer than the others. Maybe it's just going to come in now, but uh, Buddy in the lead. I don't think that one's made a stop. Oh, has it made a stop? Yes, it has. Yeah, he's just... Yeah, he's, yeah, he's just he's made his stop, and he stayed in the car. Yeah, he's just made his stop. And there he is coming out of the pits now yeah. on our screen. So yeah. he's come out. There's the Signatec car, so they, they're still ahead of him. Yes. And I think Dolan's still I ahead of the Signatec car. So the it's status quo, but we seem to have dropped back, which isn't good news, because we're now behind We're now behind the Thierry car, I think. And, uh, well, you're going to have to do... Yeah, you are. You're in fourth place, I think, at the moment. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to see the timing screen. Uh, it'll, it'll all update anyway once yeah, we get to yeah, the, the end of the lap. Yeah, it takes a little while to update from what, what we're seeing here. Um, so I, I suspect that, yes, we are we're in fourth place at the moment because you can see so Dolan in the lead by three and a half seconds from the Signatech car. Um, and it looks like on that last lap we were ten seconds. There's Gonzalez, my teammate. Um, he was ten nine and a half seconds behind the Signatec car. So that's kind of state status quo, really, around the first time it stops, because it was, it was about that before the stops. So um, that's kind of uh, worked out pretty much status quo. Yeah. Karun, what's it like? You've switched to sports cars. Obviously, we used to have seen you with the HRT Formula One team in the past and a lot of testing for some uh, top Formula One squads. So, do you like this form of racing? I do, yeah. It's, I mean, it's very different. The mentality is obviously very different. You need to sort of recalibrate yourself and, and accept that, um, you know, things generally happen a lot slower. Um, you, you know, in more ways than one, there's a lot of hanging around because there's three drivers sharing yeah, a car. Yeah. And there's all this stuff, you know, the traffic, look at this, you know, you get past a GT car and they start to come back at you because actually in a straight line, they're, they're, you know, they're nearly as quick, if not sometimes quicker. And I mean, I, I always think, in, uh, and I honestly do believe in LMP2, we do need to have another sort of 20, 30 horsepower yeah. to make us a bit quicker because it's safer you know i think from a safety standpoint at the moment we're sim because we're similar speed to a gt car we're having to dive past them and and that's not ideal you know that's a little bit dangerous sometimes particularly around here where there's probably only two or three spots you can get by them yeah exactly and uh, silverstone is the same there's obviously lots of high speed stuff but there's no real big braking zones you know for you to out outbreak people and uh, that makes life a little bit difficult You've probably not been following the GT that closely, but uh, in the GTLM, big surprise because this uh, Italian kid, Cressoni, uh, was on the pole, and he's not one of the really favoured boys. And he's raced to Ginetta in places like the Nürburgring 24, made a terrific uh, start to the race. He's hung on to that lead because he hasn't made his pit stop, and those cars will go another 10 minutes yet on their fuel, I would think. Yeah, I mean, it's. Um 
you know, it, it, it seems like in the GT class, I can count, I'm trying to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Ferraris uh, yeah. <laughs> at the front. So uh, it, it seems like uh, that's the car to have around Imola, at least at the moment. Yeah, of course, uh, here in Europe, we don't have the very quick Corvettes. Um, BMW don't have a factory team as they do over in the United States, of course. And so uh, Ferrari uh, seem to have it their own way at the moment over the Porsches. But uh, at the moment, at the front of the field, we've got the, the silver drivers mainly, uh, uh, Dolan and uh, Chata and uh, Thierry. And Gonzalez. And Gonzalez. Uh, I think Her Hirsch, is Hirsch a silver? I believe well? he is a silver, yes. And so we've got all the silver guys. And then we've got Matt McMurray uh, going for his second stint. What about a 16-year-old uh, racing like this? What, what an opportunity for a young man. Uh, I mean, to, to have the opportunity to go to Le Mans as a 16-year-old, um, you know that's uh, that's a huge huge opportunity really i mean it's it's you know i still say it's the biggest race in the world it's it's such a magical magical weekend to experience that so early in your career is um, he's, he's a very lucky boy he's a sure. very lucky boy and his dad chris of course uh, egging him on and they say he'll be the youngest man that uh, ever races at Le Mans, overtaking ricardo rodriguez a great mexican driver Although there was the odd rumour that Ricardo was maybe not as old as he said he was when he was 16. Um, and Joe Ramirez, is the famous uh, former McLaren. Uh, is he actually, is, will McLaren actually be allowed to drive well, on, the on the street part? No! Because, oh, we're on the street on the street, because the circuit's <laughs> yeah. obviously like 70% on the street. It is closed, closed <laughs> for that. So I guess that you'll, you'll go here back to England, I suppose, for a few days, will you? And, the, and then you'll, you'll head off to Le Mans for the test. Yeah, I mean, uh, life is pretty busy at the moment because I still do a lot of TV stuff for Formula One. Yes, and, uh, yeah. So I, I work with a, a TV channel out in Qatar. So head there for the Monaco Grand Prix this weekend. And then... Um, oh, head there, right. And then uh, back to Le Mans the following weekend. So, yeah, looking forward to it. I mean, uh, it's a long month. You've got to pace yourself. So you have pretty relaxed about the test and you just kind of uh, do what you have to do. Just make sure the car is vaguely in the ballpark and... You, do, you don't really do anything too adventurous at the test. You you wait for the you wait for the race weekend for that. So let's just uh, focus on the uh, front of the field here with uh, Simon Dolan. As we got the SMP Ferrari making its pit stop a little bit earlier than I would have expected. Yeah, it's about 53 minutes in, I think. Yeah, we are they usually go about an hour, don't they? Mm -hmm. But perhaps it's track position. You know, yeah, could, it could well be, couldn't it? Yeah an opportunity to get back position um, so yeah I mean if we run through the order there's the race leader Simon Dolan in the Jota car he's 1.3 seconds ahead of the Signatech car isn't he there in the background we yep, can see just see it there and Thierry further 5.3 behind with uh, my car Gonzalez in P4 at the moment 14 and a half behind uh, the have you worked with him before? Is he new to you? Well, I was actually a driver coach for him when he was doing oh. Formula 3, so oh. I spent a lot of time shouting at him on the radio <laughs> in the past, and I seem to be doing it even now. <laughs> uh, there's a bit of history there. Yeah. No, I mean, it's um, it's obviously a massive uh, eye-opener for him, I think, coming to this sort of racing this year. Um, you know, and I think, uh, and for Nathaniel Burton as well, our other teammate, you know, he's uh, an active uh, He's a good driver, you know. He's done. Um, he's done a few years of GP2, and he's, he, you know, he raced in go karts um, against some top drivers. You know, Kvyat. No, yep. Kvyat. I think he raced with John Eric Byrne and people like that. Yeah. Um, and was, you know, right up there. So he, he's a good driver, um, and and it's his first ever sports car race. So he's a. Uh, well, I just left him in the truck. He's a little bit nervous about his uh, about his stint in the traffic. Yes, he's got to work through the traffic. All all new to him, of course, yeah. but. This European uh, Le Mans series can be a springboard to great things. And we think of Brendan Hartley now with, with Porsche. And I suppose really that's what you're aiming for, something similar to that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, you know, it, it's, it's good experience and it's, it's a good championship. And for the teams, I think it's good value for money. You know, if you look at the number of teams, uh, the number of cars on the grid now um, in the LMS, it's, it's a really strong field. You know, you've got a good lineup of teams and drivers. And... Um, that's the leader of the uh, yeah. That's the leader of the GTC just uh, in our picture now. One of the SMP Ferraris uh, with uh, a lady gin at the wheel. One of the two brothers. Have you ever driven one of these Ferraris? I drove it. I tested the GTE car for a team for a couple of days. Yeah. Um, and that was actually my first ever time 
in a GT car. I'd never driven one before that. So uh, it was a, a bit of a shock to the system because I got yeah. straight from LMP1 with JRM yeah. to testing one of those cars. So um, that, that was a bit of a shock. But I mean, since then, I've done a bit of GT racing now. And it, it's, um, you know, it, it's a lot tougher than people think, you know. And I, and I always say to drivers who are doing prototypes, you know, when they say, oh, the GT guy got in the way and he helped me up and this, that and the other. But, you know, you have to really... Uh, you know, respect what they're doing because the cars uh, are so difficult to drive. You know, they, they they move around a lot more. And actually, what I found difficult is corners, which in a prototype you don't even think of. Yeah. You're easy, flat. In a GT car, they really are corners, you know. So, um, you know, all of that takes some getting used to. Just uh, looking at the uh, lap times, I watched uh, Simon Dolan's lap times the last couple of laps, and he, he is pulling away from uh, uh, Chatin in the Alpine. Yeah, it's sort of nip and tuck, isn't it? Yeah. Between them. It's a bit like the first stint with um, um, with Tinknell and Panciatici, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, in fact, all of a sudden, we see Chatown a bit closer again. She goes past the McLaren. Yeah, I think it, it I mean, it ebbs and flows, as, as we heard Harry say himself. I think yeah. it ebbs and flows with the traffic a little bit. Um, you know, we'll see, see how that pans out, really, as the race progresses. To watch what's happening in GTC because uh, young Danish kid Mac, who was uh, on the uh, pole, uh, will be uh, moving up. And uh, Karun's got to go back. And uh, Karun, really appreciate you coming in, giving us uh, some special insight. I hope your stint goes well. Thank and, you. And uh, of course, at, uh, right at the end, you're doing the last stint, are you? Yes, yeah. Berton will be in the car next, and then um, I'll run to the flag. So. Uh yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, it's such a great circuit, as I say, I haven't been here before, but it's so much fun to drive around, and uh, yeah, looking forward to it, I think it, um, we'll see see where we end up before that. And when we look at it, you know, Murphy there in, in fourth place, you could be battling for the lead, so uh, you forget yeah, all about it. It's a big ask, <laughs> it's a big ask, you know, we've got, we've got some quality opposition today, um, you know, I think the, certainly the top five cars, um, you, you know, definitely the top four, maybe the top five of all got good lineups of teams and drivers you know so i think it could be um it could be quite competitive absolutely well again very many thanks for joining us in the box and uh, we'll be watching you on the screen later All thank right, you Karun. i'll give you a wave okay thank you so Karun chandok then puts on his dark glasses heads off to the paddock and uh, he'll be in the pits in just a few moments still got a few uh out of sight of uh, our main picture of Ferrari spinning off. So, Simon Dolan, the team owner there at Jota Motorsport. What does Jota mean? How did it uh, come about to be called Jota? Nobody seems to know. Sam Higdon, who set up the team before Simon uh, Dolan uh, came on board. Um, certainly can't remember. It was a nice bright yellow crash helmet. And uh, getting ready to uh, drive this car, the uh, 81. Kessel Racing. Just saw Thomas Cremata getting ready to take over from uh, Matteo Cressoni. There is a car which has led the GTE category from the uh, very uh, beginning. There's the car that Karuna will drive a, a little later. Going through your picture. So, and Kessel Racing got uh, one lap advantage at the moment. on the uh, number 56 Ferrari. And look at the battle now at the front. See how close it is, about three or four cars length. If that, between these leading two cars and the pressure put on Simon Dolan by the uh, Alpine driver. Paul Loup Chatin. Look at it, and there it goes through. Just uh, like to see that again. It was uh, 
Again, a back marker, so the lead changes here. Just one quarter of the way through into the race. And uh, Chantal in the lead now. Chantal, who I believe... Uh, Spends most of the time as a race instructor. He was quite successful in the uh, Renault 2.0 uh, series. And uh, Paul Loop certainly doing a strong job. Just like to see that car again. See uh, whether Dolan's got an answer for that. As the uh, Pegasus car goes through. And uh, Frank Mayo. Might be uh, ninth and last of the P2s at the moment. He's putting in some sterling laps. He's the fastest man out there at the moment, just in a 137.526. And a yellow flag, there's a yellow flag at near the end of the lap somewhere. I oh, know, I think uh, it's at post 16. But I don't think it's gonna be a full course. As two Ferraris, well, actually, mass Ferraris down the uh, pit lane, including our leader. And uh, I expect Corrine will be able to get an interview with Rossoni. Certainly uh, one of his best drives. Rossoni stops right on the mark. So, Rossoni out. see what sort of pace that car has when uh, it returns to the race in the hands of uh, Thomas Kemenata. That's the battle for sixth and seventh at the moment. Actually, that, that's uh, yeah, it's a battle for sixth and seventh. And Jan Chirou's a very fast Czech driver. Is now in the uh, 24. We sweep past a Porsche. And after these pit stops, I think everything will calm down a bit. We'll see where we are. One of the two Pacini brothers is in second place in GTLM at the moment. And just a, a couple of cars haven't made pit stops. There's the uh, Thierry car. This here the battle. We're just seeing the uh, we have Matt McMurray doing a, a nice long first stint here. And there is a young Matt. Of course, he can't drive on the road, he has to be driven. He's got a, a, a driver coach with him. There's the overall classification. And at the moment, showing Castle Racing in first and second places. And that's a bit of a surprise. Expect to see, of course, the cars right up there. The uh, JMW car moved up to fifth. And then AT Racing. The SMP cars. Slipping back. So, Clemenata now at the wheel of the car, which has uh, led. And I think we we're going to get an interview from the man who led the... Uh, GT just uh, is walking to the front of the garage. And certainly a good stint from him. And I, I know that uh, Corrine is already down there. Just uh, waiting to be queued up. 
Of course, Matthew, I have an interview here with uh, my friend Matteo, uh, car number 81. Congratulations, you're first you're, you're for the moment in your category GTE, so good job. Yeah, the, the car is fantastic. The only, the only problem is with the slow car that uh, normally doesn't look the blue flag. But uh, for now, we cross the finger because if it's going like this, uh, it's perfect. Thank you. So, it's perfect so far, says uh, Cressoni, who's done an outstanding job there. Put his name on the map a bit, I think, today. Let's see what his teammate can do. He's on an outlap at the moment, so uh, there is the 81 car. Got a feel for how quick he's going to be. But uh, the man who is behind him in the 80 car, one of the two Pacini brothers, he is going to be pretty quick. So uh, we might see a change amongst uh, that category. And it's Giacomo Pacini. Simon Dolan. Meanwhile, while we've had our pits interview, for some reason, has uh, slipped back to uh, fifth place. Can't see what's uh, happened to uh, Simon Dolan there. Shut out in the lead now from Thierry. Whoa! Ferrari. Oh! 54 car spins. And uh, Michael Lyon is still in that car. I'm not Certainly started it. The uh, Castle Ferrari very nearly nailed him, but didn't. Perizzini was the, the spinner. I think he's uh, one of the older guys. He's got a bit of history behind him, actually. Here's some highlights coming up for the uh, first hour. This was a fairly clean start with the everyone getting away nicely. And the uh, Jota Zytek going into uh, the lead. It was a bit of bumping and boring with the Murphy and Thierry car. Lots of action amongst the uh, Ferraris. The uh, Aston Martin golf car went off and very nearly got nailed. In fact, quite a few spinners. Another one was the uh, 95 that got as deep into the gravel as you can get with the Delina, the Belgian at the wheel. Sorry, uh, I said that before. Stirrazioli. This was the uh, pit stop. Uh, Surprised us a bit when uh, Simon Dolan got in, and I didn't think that was uh, the order they were going to run them. SMP Racing with uh, Anton Ladygin leading the uh, category. And then in uh, the recent minutes of this race, the uh, 36 car in the lead. This was the change we just saw a few moments ago. The uh, lead car in a GTE. And Cloanata. Still haven't got a, a feel for how quickly he's going. I think uh, Corrine is uh, down in the pits again. And uh, she's ready to go. I think we'll be hearing for her in just a second. All the lights flashing from the uh, Alpine. And shut down doing a good job. Again, more light flashing. So, Signatech running that Alpine. And so uh, we can go down to the uh, pit lane in uh, just a few moments. I think that uh, 
Karine Lima is there and uh, ready to uh, bring us an update. I have the honor to be here with Fabien Bardez. So I was your team, Fabien. Yeah, hi. <laughs> no, I really enjoy for this, uh, for this hour. I take uh, again experience, experience about different situation and uh, the weather is the weather hot. is nice, it's hot, but fantastic day and uh, really, really enjoy and funny. Thank you so much. So, a safe pair of hands, they say, the uh, great former uh, French national goalkeeper played, I think, if I remember rightly, for Marseille, certainly played for Man U. I wonder if he watched the British FA Cup final yesterday. As an Arsenal fan, I was certainly uh, pleased with the result. Well, it's a bit of a nail biter, but uh, I believe our famous goalie will be racing at Le Mans this year. But uh, well done to uh, Karine for uh, snagging that interview. Very familiar face in uh, France. And indeed in Manchester too. Did sterling work for uh, United. So, Chatin still leading from uh, Thierry. The gap has widened to 7.69 seconds. Simon Dolan is still in fifth place. I'm still not sure where he suddenly went from second to fifth. We were in an interview at the time, I think. Hirsch, who's uh, on his second uh, stint now, is in a third place and has got, uh, well, in fact, Hirsch, Gonzalez and Dolan are, um, as we've got the 75 car in trouble and uh, limping round. And that's the pro speed uh, entry. Maxime Soule, the, uh, one of the drivers there. And uh, coming in with a so punctured right rear, I think. There's that Alpine. Wide the gap to 7.6. There's another seven seconds back then to uh, the battle between Hirsch, Gonzalez and Dolan. And then a big gap then to Jan Chirouz in the sixth place car. Chatin, Pierre Loup, doing an excellent job here. It's a strong driver lineup. And remember, in uh, that car, you've uh, still got uh, Ollie Webb to go in there, the British driver, a lot of uh, experience in single seaters. Any new to uh, sports cars though, saw him at Daytona 24 earlier in the year, which I think was his first sports car race. Alpine Renault program won by uh, Signatech. the start finish line again back with the uh, the BMW GTC still being led by uh, the 73 car and Lady Jin and uh, just to update you that Kessel Ferrari with uh, Clemenata in it is uh, still in the lead of that category with Pacini second and uh, the yellow Jim McWhorter car up into third place at the moment. And uh, it's now got Daniel McKenzie, young British driver, at the wheel. McKenzie doing some uh, good lap times. There's more traffic for Chatin. Uh, silver drivers lapping about a second, second and a half 
slower than the uh, goals and, that were in earlier. Chatar, see, just to go 40.2. Look at this gaggle of machinery here. Just going through the DTC classification. McLaren versus uh, BMW and trying to do the big switch there. As BMW loses out. Nice racing. Should mention it in the, the 58 car now is uh, Sahel Ayari. And that there down in about sixth or seventh place in the 58 car. But uh, Ayari with uh, things like the Macau Grand Prix uh, victory in his past. Sometimes a, a fiery fellow. So that's how the uh, 99 McLaren made the mistake. And uh, Ashlani at the wheel, Karim Ashlani, not a driver I know anything about, I must admit. I don't think he's got a great uh, CV. I understand he's part Swiss and part Syrian. And he's raced mainly for Oak in the French GT Championship, the 38-year-old. So, uh, what an interesting race there. Now the BMW trying to go back past him. And they've got prototypes right behind them. They're too interested in their battle to look for the prototypes. Here's a replay. There's the McLaren very late on the brakes. And uh, Chatin pulling away now from Thierry at the front of the field. There's the Thierry car. Good battles here. Thierry, 43. Hirsch, who's uh, been in this car since the start of the race. Remember Johnny Molem, reigning uh, GTLM champion uh, from last year from uh, this series, telling me that uh, he's driven with, uh, with Hirsch and he uh, really rates the fella. So uh, he's a really strong silver to have in that 43 car. Christian Klein with the uh, Red Bull Formula One experience and uh, Robin uh, Bradella, of course, also to get in the car. Bradella, the, the bronze. So I'm not sure quite what his pace will be. But I have to watch out for the, the 43. The result at Silverstone. Simon Dolan just lapping about one minute forty. But uh, this is uh, a battle royal going on between this uh, pair. Fifteen seconds behind the uh, Signatech Alpine. And we have had a change in uh, GTLM. The 80 cars I thought would happen. Pacini has gone into the lead of that category, lying in ninth place overall at the moment. So we're looking out for the number 80. The uh, other of the Kessel Racing cars. What a great uh, race Kessel are having here. There is the 80. Just going past uh, some of the uh, others. I think that is Ayari that's right on the back now. Ayari 
closing up. There's the 71. And uh, that is, uh, that's one of the SMP's GTC cars. And Iari in the LM car, so I think he'll probably be going by very soon. 73 leading that GTC category. Still with Anton Leidchen in the, the car. And uh, Shata still pulling away from... Uh, well, Hirsch now in second place. And excellent job by Hirsch, just in front of Thierry. This was the move that did it. Down the inside. And nice clean maneuver. You see the Gonzalez Murphy car right there in third place. Now they climb up the hill again. So, Shata, Pierre-Luc Shata, well in the lead, 17 seconds now, ahead of a, a battling trio for second place. And uh, then it's Simon Dolan, who's another 17 seconds back. Then Chiruz, Matt McMurray in seventh place, still there. And uh, Frank Mayu is in eighth place in the uh, 34 Orica. Puccini leading the LM. And uh, GTLM and GTC being led by uh, Lady Jin from uh, the, uh, another of the Russian-driven cars. It's the uh, 71 with that bat off of the lead. Well, that's the car that Lady Jin's uh, brother shares. And then uh, in third place in that category, Mikhail Mack, who put it on the pole. He's... Uh, Certainly charging hard, and he's by far the quickest of the GTC cars out there at the moment. So we expect to see Mac coming through. He's uh, he's quite close behind Basov, so I suspect we might see a change in GTC fairly soon as we watch this battle for second place overall as they come up to the McLaren. New blood by Moran Racing is the entrant. And uh, Gonzalez, who's uh, completely new to sports car racing. You heard Karun Chandok here, his teammate, a few uh, minutes ago. Karun probably back in the pits by now. Okay, a real gaggle of cars there, with uh, the prototypes uh, in between. Gonzalez, of course, used to drive for T-Sport. He won the uh, national class at the British Formula 3 Championship some years back, I think, when uh, Karun was coaching him. There's that BMW. See them uh, racing a lot out in the States. There's the Aston. And a quick spin for the... Uh, the 73. And again, that nice shot of the Aston. So uh, Anton Ladychin having a spin there under pressure. And uh, I wonder if that will put Basov into the lead of that category. I said all the time, this younger Danish kid, Mac, is coming as we got. Let's stop here. Gonzalez car, Murphy prototypes. I think our cameraman just arriving on the scene down there. And the uh, 34 also in. 
And it's going to be a bit tight to, to get out there. Fuel going in. Frank Mayo. Well, they go together. Through the uh, kink. Pit lane kink. So second pit stops coming up for the uh, prototypes. Again, might be a little bit early to try and get some track position. Shata continues to do a uh, very, very good job in the uh, Alpine Renault with the Nissan engine, but they are, after all, in the same family. There's the TDS car of Thierry. And uh, there's the uh, 73 Ferrari of Lady Jin having that uh, excursion. And uh, through the gravel, there's a 99. Well, that's not the first time we've seen that off. With uh, Ashlani finding it a bit of a struggle, I think. So the Murphy car seems to be on a bit of a different strategy. Come out uh, almost to lap down, as you see there. I wonder if he can uh, pull away. Doesn't want to go a lap down in case there's a, a full course. It's the 41. Actually just about to be lapped of, of McMurray. in a moment. Long old session for a young lad like this. Quiet chap, just as you say, 16. And a huge experience for him. Hasn't made a mistake. Done a pretty good job thus far. Chata, Hirsch and Thierry, then Dolan. Murray in sixth place. And out on track, we've got a Ferrari. Um, I thought I saw a Ferrari off, but uh, no, it's a, a replay. Very busy race track at the moment here, Imola near Bologna. Now the uh, golf coloured Porsche going through our picture. Mac is indeed up to second place in GTC. And look at that dust there. And I think that 65 Ferrari is going to be stuck. That's uh, Peter Mann of the United States, I think, at the wheel at the moment of that car. The uh, Signal Tech car is uh, in. Gary Hirsch, temporarily at least, goes into the lead. Chatin will stay in the car. Hirsch, Thierry, Chatin. Chatin now drops to uh, fourth spot. We're still going on light splashing. for that board to uh, swizzle around. Is there a bit of a problem down there? Yeah, they've definitely got a problem. Try again. Won't start now, it goes. How long was that pit stop? I can't quite see. It seemed the fuel hose was out. And uh, it, it to start, didn't want to start initially. Kind of to the cockpit. 
back on track now, the car which was leading. So again, we're going through the second uh, phase of pit stops for the uh, prototype cars. More prototype two to give the category its full name. There's uh, Thierry in uh, second place. of a discussion going on there. Philip Sino, of course, the boss of that outfit. Yeah, Thierry again working his way through. He's, uh, GT cars, it's going to be the same tail all the way through to the end. As I predicted, uh, the young Dane Mack has gone into the lead of GTC. Puccini still leads in the Castle uh, car in uh, GTLM. Kenzie in the McWhirter car is still in uh, third place. Murphy prototype. Gonzalez in seventh. So, everything to play for with three and a half, so two and a half hours left to go. And uh, the lead just 2.7 at the moment. Hershen Terrier. 95 Ferrari. It's had the off course excursion, maybe two. So with uh, Delina. Saw it in our highlights. So, Mikel Mack driving with Johnny Lawson and uh, Andrea Piccini. He's uh, currently leading as uh, more pit stops. Thanks. Go to work down there. The uh, 95 car coming in, interesting shot, straight to the wall, just tips it over, well, tips it over, but clangs it a little bit. Mads Rasmussen and Ilya Melenkov, a Dane and a Russian together. They're in about sixth place. So, Matt Murray, the amazing flameless candle, appears to be a sponsor. Chris Dyson's name on the car, but Chris not uh, here this weekend. And pushing the car back. Just a bit of inexperience there. I think it must have overshot. And now uh, off he goes. So, with the pit stops, different things uh, happening. We saw the uh, Chatin car in. So that drops back at the moment to a fourth place. Thierry in the lead from uh, Dolan, who is now second, and Hirsch.
And the, uh, the 43 has now got Romain Brandella in the car. A bronze driver. Be interested to see what, uh, bit, what lap times he can do. Here's the Durier car coming in then. Oh, this could just put the, uh, the Zytec of Dolan into the lead. Just as it was with Ticknell at the wheel early on. There's the Thierry machine then. No driver change. Silver stays in because he has to have uh, more time in the car by the regulations. Fuel going on. Wheel guns at the ready. Are they going to change tyres there? Certainly going for the, the inside. Sometimes they don't change all four. So, certainly an intriguing race at the moment. It's the battle for uh, third position. Bit of a seesawing uh, situation here as the pit stops take place. And uh, Shatta pushing hard. Let's see what he can do here against their uh, silver driver, Bradella. 43. And he's all over him like a cheap suit. Surely he's going to get by in a moment. Well, those lap times a bit misleading because Brandello was on the out lap. And that was his 156. And uh, certainly defending uh, strongly at the moment from. Uh, Thierry, as I said before, Dad owns a whole chain of frozen food shops in France. I think they're, uh, they're famous for their ice cream as well. Let's talk about Thierry. This is, the, of course, the Signatech car of Chatin. And uh, Chatin. Doing a very good job, and I think he'll find a way. So he's got the McLaren in the way at the moment. Surely he's going to get past the 43 of Brandelar. Brandelar goes past the McLaren. Max still leading the uh, GTC class. Well, this is, this is a, a good battle here for second place overall at the moment. Finish line again, and he had a look down the inside, down at the uh, Tamborello. Trying to climb uphill now, this fabulous circuit. Heading towards Tosa. As I think about the outside again. And then really climbing up the hill. Go sweeping through the uh, Piratella. And really pushing him hard. And then the uh, compression down there at Aqua Minerali. his lights again at a Russian Ferrari. Well, Brandella holding on. It 
Blue flags waved. And Ferrari gets between them. Gives a bit of a, a breathing space to uh, Brandella. And now the uh, Alpine goes down the inside. Still lots of the GT cars to be overtaken. What a busy place it is here. And here's a replay. And the uh, Alpine uh, finally passing. Thierry, incidentally, is some 8.259 seconds ahead of this battle. And we've got oh, 28 seconds or so on the fourth place Gonzalez car. And uh, Zytek have got Felipe, Philip Albuquerque in the uh, Zytek now, taking over from uh, Simon Dolan. And he's uh, getting some pretty quick laps in. Albuquerque, fantastic in qualifying, put it on the pole. So I guess D Dolan will go back in the car later. Still, this battle continues. Sweep past the uh, pits once more. Scrap for second place, and the Alpine's quite a bit closer now. And tries the inside, it's going to make it stick, I think. Yes, he does. Good move there by uh, Chatin. And Signatech Alpine with uh, Nissan Power, as we see it again. And the gap was left, says thank you very much, dives through the inside and moves up to second place. That uh, squabbling really has given a little bit of a breathing space to uh, Thierry. Thierry, shut up. And uh, just uh, to see that uh, Albuquerque, just uh, a lap of 138.9. Suspected to be going a little bit quicker than that later in the race. That's the uh, 81 Ferrari and uh, Caminata doing a very good job actually, hanging on to uh, the lead of the LM class. Kenzie now second, Venturi third. And uh, Shaita, the uh, Russian driver in fourth position. Mac leads the GTCs. Olivier Beretta in a second place in uh, that category. If, uh, if Beretta is closing up on uh, Mac, yes, he is. As we would expect, really, from somebody with his experience and success. So, in the lead, the Morgan Nissan, which is an on rope chassis. Bags of Morgan. Remember, on rope will have a new car at Le Mans. On the test in two weeks' time, the Ligier, that's their new Coupe LMP2. Be interested to see how quick that is. That's at 95 to Lina. And quite a, a gap between those two. As I said, Mac, I'm expecting the GTC category to come under pressure from uh, Olivier Beretta in the near future. Caminata. Certainly got Mackenzie closing up on him. I think we might have a change in the LM class as well. And young Daniel Mackenzie, the 25 year old from uh, Reading. Raced in Formula BMW and uh, 
Formula 3 in the national category. He had a, a season uh, in GP2. Oh, sorry, ran a 3.5 in Comtech uh, a few years ago. Finished 12th in the championship. So a man with some decent experience. And uh, we interest to see uh, what McKenzie can do, but he might be able to take that 66 car into the lead. Thierry still pulling away from uh, Chatat. Thierry uh, really in the groove here. He's been in that car for quite a long time now. And uh, Brandella lapping in the 140s, whereas Gonzalez in the fourth place car is lapping in one, three seconds a lap quicker. So uh, he'll be closing up, might have a change there as well. Well, it's been a busy race so far. There's the GTC classification, Formula Racing. Quite a big surprise this to see them doing so well. Ooh, that's, uh, that's the way past it, and up the hill there. That's uh, Mac. Ooh, through the gravel. Still in the gravel, finally getting back on track. Scar McKenzie must be closing up on him. Meanwhile, a prototype battle for uh, third place. Oh, this is Tyria, this is our leader. Uh, with McMurray hanging on to him, remember, he's been lapped. 55 car has been pushed back into the garage. Well, that's a huge disappointment for Duncan Cameron, Matt Griffin and Mirko Venturi. Matt not even got into the car. One here last year in the GTE. if Kareem can get down there and, and find somebody from uh, AF Corsa to see what the problem is. And there's the, the 81. Is that the 66 to see behind it? And 
no, that's, uh, I think that's the... There's a Porsche. And I think that is uh, the 81, certainly hopping it over the curbs. Kenzie still four seconds back. Another 55. Back on pit lane. Put a race of tape on it. And uh, Gonzalez doing a great job there in the Murphy Cup. Just gone fastest lap of the race so far, 136.529. There's our uh, leader in uh, GTLM being uh, hunted down by Mackenzie. Mackenzie with quite a few cars to uh, pass. It's the uh, third of the yellow cars in our pictures. Thierry continues to do an outstanding job here. Thierry by TDS Racing. <laughs> nice shot of the car. Jack Murillo, the engineer on that car. He's obviously got it set up very well for uh, Jean Pierre Thierry. BMW uh, trying to keep out of the way. And uh, Beretta in the uh, GTC has just taken the lead from uh, Mac. So a change at the front of GTC. Olivier Beretta. With all those Le Mans victories to his credit in uh, Corvettes. So the gap now between Thierry and Chata is uh, 18 seconds. Brandella is then uh, another nine seconds back, and Gonzalez is uh, closing up on Brandella. And then it's uh, Albuquerque after that. And uh, Albuquerque lapping quickly, but not as quick as Gonzalez. And that's a bit of a surprise. Maybe a bit of uh, tyre conservation going on there at the moment. Two fastest men out there are, are Gonzalez and uh, in Albuquerque. for the, uh, the Murphy team. In theory from uh, Ireland, but I think they're, they're based in Buckingham area somewhere. And this is this third place battle now coming uh, onto our screens. Brandella and Gonzalez. And uh, joining me in the commentary box, I'm delighted to say, is uh, young, recently retired, Alan McNish. The young part of it, that's uh, nice. Like Thank that. you. Compete with an even younger McNish here, Finley McNish. I'm not sure if he's going to offer any commentary to us or not, Alan. No, 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 no. he's usually full of comments, I can is, tell is you he, that. But, uh, well, nice to have uh, father and son here. And this race, interesting stage at the moment, Alan. We really can't see quite the way it's going at the moment. Albuquerque's just uh, got into the Zytec uh, quite recently. Yeah, it, it's a funny race, because I think there's... Uh, a little part that's going to play out right at the end, Andrew, because, uh, you know, they're close on making it without a splash and a dash. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's a key thing. I, I would think that certainly if you look at Gonzalez there, 
in the Orica. He came in so early yeah. that uh, yeah. the chances are they are definitely not going to make it. But that's the key if they can get rid of that. Yeah. Even though it's a pretty quick pit lane, it is quite a long pit lane and uh, that's going to be one of the factors that it should play out right at the end. Well, it's such a strange pit lane, isn't it, with that elbow? And now we've got a bit of a battle going on here into this. Uh, and a pass, indeed, by the Murphy car. Oh, Whoa. and he gave him a bit of a nudge as well. Yeah, he certainly wasn't, <laughs> wasn't the uh, friendliest of ones. But then again, uh, I have to say that, uh, you know, the new blood car, I think it's Brandel, uh, didn't yeah. exactly make it easy earlier on. He didn't. Uh, well, he's got his blood up now. New blood or not. Oh, and the 65 car is off. And, uh, well, we just see this uh, little shove again. That was a little... Uh, I well, think both of them actually moved. If, from what I saw there, the Murphy car moved uh, in towards getting the ideal line and also the car that was being overtaken kind of moved in a bit early. Certainly wasn't his turning point, that's for sure. So I just said it was a bit of both. Both of well, Ferrari being off. Of it. That's the second time he's been off. I think that's the American... Uh, I don't know if Peter Mann is at the wheel at the moment. Yes, he is. Yes. Peter Mann. There's been a lot of Ferrari struggling. I think that these corners here, uh, there's a lot of times when you break and turn in, and if you don't have a lot of confidence in the back of the car, then uh, and you're carrying a lot of speed, especially into the second chicane where we're seeing the Aston coming into now, and you can quite easily get the car out of shape, and then it's the moment to no return when you get off that rubber line and onto the dusty part of the circuit. Yeah, so just before you came in the box, I was uh, suggesting that maybe... Albuquerque, we know can go fun a bit quickly. He's going at the moment. Is is on a bit of a conservation to to make it last for four. Going to just do four stops. Uh, that's obviously the ideal thing, but ultimately he's uh, not on the lead of the race, so you're not in the control. He's 25 seconds off the lead, um, a little bit more than that actually, and so therefore he's got to get the pace yeah. going as well as trying to save fuel. It's that old uh, difficult point of trying to do two things at once of uh, speed and also economy but you know Felipe's got good experience in that especially being an Audi factory driver and now the way that uh, the World Endurance Championship fuel economy based or energy based program is that uh, if there's anyone that can save fuel I'd have thought that it should be Felipe. I have to ask you do, do you like these new rules for uh, the World Endurance Championship I mean you're obviously out, well you're, you're out of it but you're you're right there on the on the pit lane of course advising them. Yeah it's something that I think we need to get used to it a little bit. Personally, I really enjoyed the cut and thrust of the total aggression of going after it. Um, but then again, you know, you always had to be efficient in the way you did it. That didn't matter whether it's now uh, in my sort of era, if you like, or back in Derek Bell's time. Yeah. You always had to be efficient, and that's with the car and also with the fuel. And it's just an extension of it. I think it's a, it's a, basically it's a reflection of where the world is, you yeah. know, in terms of uh, road cars and things. And that's where the manufacturers are involved. That's why you know there's another. We understand big announcement coming up very soon about other manufacturers getting more involved in the World Endurance Championship in Le Mans, which is fantastic yeah. news. Yeah. That uh, it's going from strength to strength. So they must be doing something right. They must be. Yeah. Well, the uh, Terrier. Uh, Thierry Carr has been doing a grand job out there, actually, Alan. Um, obviously, he's uh, silver. Got a couple of silvers. Yeah. Uh, first, well, you think so really the silvers? Well, I've you got know, to say, there's a few that uh, I question in there. You know, Chata, I know is his history, LMPC champion. Yeah. And uh, the the other one, obviously, Gonzalez, being an F1 super license I holder. I find we that a bit strange, the, to be honest. The whole system's strange, isn't it? And um, personally. I would scrap the whole thing. Just let, yeah, yeah, just the natural economics of the thing work itself out. The idea of it, logic. the idea of it, of course, is to bring more of these uh, pay drivers, uh, entrepreneur drivers, I like to call yep. them, into the racing. But if they're paying the bills, they're going to decide how long they drive anyway. And maybe some of them don't want to do the, the bulk of the race. It's, um, it's a very tricky balance. There's no question about it, especially in. Uh, the European Le Mans series because it is a feeder formula if you yeah, like to the World Endurance Championship and the LMPC was a feeder formula to this and I think the, the thing is that uh, it's the, now the majority of the driving time out of the Ford so if you can get a like a hooky silver driver if you like yeah. then it's a huge huge benefit yeah. to the team and uh, that sort of does skew things very significantly or potentially very significantly but anyway pit stop down here from the car that we saw off the Adler plastic back car Cars coming into the pits, and uh, we're just halfway through the race right now. Just just gone past the uh, two-hour mark. So here we are, Alan. These pit stops—they uh, practice this uh, pretty well. 
Well, it's, a, it's a tricky thing because you're not allowed to fuel and tyre at the same time on Maxi no. Formula 1. And you're only allowed to have two mechanics over the line at any one point after the fueler has came off the guy in the white helmet. they will pop back yeah. and then it will be, if they change tyres, a bit of a ballet dance to get the, the tyres done, which should be, in theory, about 22 seconds. But this is purely and simply a fuel stop. Not yeah. exactly the fastest getaway in the world. Uh, Pegasus race in the 29. Luke Viler. And uh, while we've been talking about, I noticed that uh, Albuquerque has just done the fastest lap of the race, as Alan points out. Goes purple, 136.144. He's really getting on. I also noticed that uh, Mackenzie has gone into the lead of the uh, GTLM class. I suggested he was going to do that, and he has. So uh, very interesting that uh, that young man who done a season of, of uh, Renault 3.5 racing seen that his career had gone away but picking it up with Jim uh, Jim McMurphy's team there yeah but if you look up and down the grid uh, there's some fantastic drivers in yep. here not necessarily just in LMP2 but uh, you go down and uh, you've got likes of Alex Brundle yep. who's driving in the McLaren there yep. in the GTC category and so there's a real real strength in terms of uh, some of the, the good experienced guys but yep. there's all, like um, Soel Ayari yep. or alternatively the new blood coming through as well and we've got Mika Salo in there we haven't seen much my of old Mika. teammate from Formula yeah, 1 yeah. Got a Ferrari there with uh, a problem and it's now had a bit of a hit to the rear yeah. and it, the body works rubbing on the left rear yeah. tyre they'll have to come in well, they have to come in, or alternatively, he's, yeah, he definitely has yeah. the smoke coming off that. And uh, Olivier Beretta, of course, all those Le Mans class wins for Corvette. He's leading the GTC class at the moment. A few laps back, overtook the young Danish driver, Mac. Yeah, it's, uh, certainly, I'll tell you one thing which is uh, quite tricky as you see the Murphy prototype coming up to pass is the straight line speed of uh, the GT cars are actually quicker than the LMP2s, and that was something that I noticed right at the beginning of the race. As soon as they got into it, uh, the GTs were able to actually out-accelerate an LMP on the straights, but then significantly slower in the corners. And that must mean it's pretty tough for the lapping of the slower cars. Yeah. I think worse than I've ever had it, for sure, because uh, you've got to really do it in the corners. Around here, it's quite narrow circuit, and also the corners tend to flow into each other. But it means it's going to be a real compromise if you're going to actually get through cleanly. Thierry car looking pretty good at the moment. 72 laps on the board and uh, has pulled that lead out to 20.487 seconds over the Murphy. Signatech there just behind Murphy and then New Blood drops back to uh, fourth place. And uh, what about uh, Felipe Albuquerque in the... 36.9, he's down to 43 seconds from uh, Thierry who's, who's leading. That's yeah. roughly two seconds quicker at the moment uh, per lap than the lead car. But then again, traffic's such a dominant factor yeah. that you can lose one, two seconds quite easily. Yeah. And so if you've got to be clean. It's your average, it's not your fastest lap at the end of the day in this type of formula. No. It's your average lap through traffic and uh, making sure your slowest laps are slower, quicker than anyone else's slowest laps. You see, very well illustrated there from a shot why the, the uh, bodywork is on that tyre, how it's uh, bent back, but he's decided not to stop and see uh, uh, oh, that's a highlights, no, that's a highlights right. package we've got here. Wow, that um, looks a bit that, tricky coming down there with the BMW tricky. going around the yeah. outside of the McLaren. Yeah, there were some uh, quite exciting moments we had uh, early on in the race and some phenomenal avoidances. Well, I've been sitting in the grandstand watching Maybe. some of this eating ice cream, so I've oh. missed some of these. It's good to see. Yeah, well, because they're happening all around this, this fantastic racetrack. You raced here in the Formula One, of course, in the past, Alan. Yeah, uh, I came here for the first time in 1988 and uh, then... Uh, latterly with Formula One and also with sports cars in the ILMC category when uh, Audi competed in that in 2011. Yes. Beautiful circuit, I have to say, as we yeah. see that collision again coming into yeah. turn one that we spoke about where both of them kind of turned into each other more than anything else. Yeah, that was just, what, ten it's minutes ago? Though. Yeah, it was a bit silly, but no damage done. No. But it's a beautiful track. It's got real yep. character. It's quite narrow. Uh, the corners require a certain amount of attacking tendency, but also a certain amount of respect as well, because they're they are tricky, uh, especially down into Aqua Minerale. Finley, little boy, and I sat there wa and watched qualifying yesterday, and quite a few were struggling to make the second part of it. But that's one of the tricks. It's uh, it is one of the old school tracks. Well, we've had quite a few changes uh, of drivers in the uh, LM GTLM category. And uh, now leading that is the uh, 72 SMP car. And Victor Shetar, pretty quick Russian actually, 
is now leading and he took over from uh, that's the car he shares with Bertolini so that one's got to look Bertolini hasn't been in the car yet that's got to look pretty damn good uh, for that category and uh, also a bit of change the car which was leading uh, with Mackenzie has now got another young Brit in, in uh, Richardson and uh, interesting to see how he gets on that's uh, George Richardson and uh, more pit stops coming up and I think we're going to get an Alpine uh, driver change here here we are, uh, Alan. Yeah, into the pits, definitely a driver change. And uh, they're setting that up. It's going to be new tyres all round, which you normally do yeah. with a uh, driver change. So the guy going in always knows what the tyre is that he's going to go yeah. out on, no flat spots or anything else. It's a standard thing. But, uh, they, you know, there's different ways of doing it. Some people have a driver helper, and uh, the guy getting out just jumps out and legs it. And uh, <laughs> in this situation, it's the yeah. driver getting out that's actually yeah. doing all the belts and braces. Part. Yeah, well, shut out. I did a pretty good job there. Also did a good job of not running into the camera. Yeah, he did. <laughs> so interesting to see these Alpine Renault colours here that uh, well, I remember seeing at Le Mans 30 or 40 years ago. And uh, I think Renault's still just putting their, their toes in the water. water. Yeah, they did, they did it last year. It worked very well for them. And working with the Signatech team, which, of course, is a Philip Zeno's outfit, was very, very experienced, do a great job, run cars in various different categories. And also, you've got to remember that they've also been running the Renault engine in the past in Formula 3, and yeah. also this year, uh, with the re-emergence of Renault engines in Formula 3. The yeah, European I think they've got a few issues with that, though, they at the moment. Yeah. They have at the moment, but it's just They'll generally it. the fact that Renault are getting back in yeah. uh, to the different categories outside of Formula yeah. 1. Only aware because they climbed on board the Alpine, new to the team this year. And uh, Ollie Webb with a lot of experience in uh, big single-seaters. Just been getting a little bit oh, of uh, help here from oh, Finley. says the pit stop was 33 seconds was about it? for that, which is a bit oh. slower than expected for the tyre side. But I think they were just going to get a bit slower. Stop go penalty there. That's a second place car, that's yep. Gonzalez. Yeah. Causing a collision. collision with the 43. I presume that's uh, the Brando. incident going into the first corner. Yeah, that well, it's taken a while to go, come up with that. And I see Gonzalez just happened to go go uh, purple in the uh, first sector as well. well he he's, he's got been a on penalty the in the first round at yeah. Silverstone, yeah. Uh, which was I can't remember exactly what for. Well, he did a drive through there. Did as he well. not do it at the very beginning of the race? Was it the the start procedure? Maybe it was. Yeah, I can't remember exactly. Yeah. I remember. He got a penalty there. Well, that young kid, Matt McMurray, the 16-year-old, Finley is 16 and he's racing in this, not many years ago. Seven years older than you, chap. He's been in that car now for uh, over two years, uh, over, t <laughs> over two hours. So he's doing a good job. But he also, in Silverstone as well, did a long, long stint. Yeah. And that's now, one thing that I think it's difficult for people at home, you know, for concentration for that length of time, especially here, it's, yeah. it's nice and cool in the commentary booth you're yeah. standing in, Andrew, but outside yeah. it is actually pretty warm. And to be able to be keep your concentration for that period of time, never mind actually get on and learn it at that age, then I think is pretty impressive. I remember at 16, I was struggling to remember where my, you know, anything <laughs> was, never mind driving a racing car. Yeah. So Albuquerque now in the third place in the Yota car. Look at his lap times, Alan. He's, he's uh, well, up to second now. And the pit stops, yeah. The pit stops, yeah. So he's taking two seconds a lap off Thierry A. So is that going to plan, you think, for the... Uh, it, it's going to be very, very tight. I think yeah. it is a race that's going to run out towards the end. Um, it's a bit early to say it's going to plan, yes. Uh, there was a couple of laps that Simon Dolan had a problem. I'm not yeah. sure exactly what, they, what, what it was, but uh, he dropped back. He did, and we couldn't see on the no, screen no. what happened. No. I, I asked uh, the team as well, and they weren't 100% sure, but it was 10 seconds left. Yeah, well, so we can go to the uh, pits. So we're going to hear from, uh, from Chatin, and uh, we've got uh, Corrine down there. It'll be interested to see you did a nice long stint. So uh, see what he's got to say, but a good job from him. For the LMP2, I'm here with Paulou Chatin. He did a good race. Uh, you had a problem to start your engine. Yeah, we just got an uh, electronic problem when I restart. We lose, uh, I think, 15 seconds, but uh, at the beginning, the pace was good. Just at the end, we got a small problem with the tire, so we have to pit uh, earlier than uh, on the planning. So we'll see now. But you still have your chances to win. Uh, I don't know, I think we can, but it will be complicated because of the problem with the rear left tire. 
So we'll see. We have to do, uh, do the end of race, and uh, we'll see after. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, we saw the, the car sitting there, Alan, and uh, just uh, wouldn't fire up. As he said, lost uh, 15 seconds. And Ollie Webb now at the wheel. As the 80 Ferrari goes sliding off. We've seen a lot of this uh, during this race. So uh, that's the Kessel Racing car. And uh, just uh, who's at the wheel of that at the moment? Number 80. Uh, yeah, I think he's, he's off our charts there. That's the one that uh, Giacomo Pacini is driving. It's Michael. Michael Brodeskiewski, I think, is at the wheel. As you see, you said Murphy coming again. He's tight, out of sequence, isn't he, really? Yeah, this could be the drive-through penalty that oh, he had I for think the you're collision. Right. Yeah, this is a drive-through. I, I, I have to say from a... Yep. No, it's, he's actually stopping in the box. So that's he's got to do his drive-through, would he? Yeah, unless we haven't we might not seen it. it. Yeah. But uh, normally you have to do a drive-through without any service work at all because otherwise it's not the complete yeah. penalty. A drive-through is one of the most infuriating uh, things for a uh, team and uh, also uh, especially for a driver because you know that it's just uh, gone and you can see time slipping away from you. Gonzalez has shown it's making four pit stops. So I think you, I think they usually count yeah. the drive-through. Clicks up on the computer as a pit stop, doesn't it? But so uh, looking a little bit further down in the GTC category, the fourth position is number 94 in a Ferrari, which uh, is actually, and I've just realised, one of my next-door neighbours. No! Yes, <laughs> Mr Castellacci. And uh, I... Yeah, basically, he's a guy that uh, lives just next door to us. Uh, really, really nice, nice <laughs> lad. In Monaco, and, yeah. Yep, and uh, now he's sort of into himself in the Ferrari with the GTC in, in fourth place right now. Just going back to um, Felipe and uh, what he's doing here. This is a tricky oh, point, Andrew, yeah. I'm saying, is that uh, he's obviously quicker, but the GT yeah. uh, cars are actually just quicker and he's got to yeah. get on the brakes. And that's the really hard part, is that if you get a gaggle of two or three of them, they're fighting amongst themselves, doing correct things because they're doing their own race. Yeah. And then you're stuck and you just have to wait. You can see four or five seconds disappear. Not on this occasion, but uh, it can easily happen with a gaggle like that. And there's also intrigue between the GTLMs and the GTCs, because the GTCs have got ABS, and they can usually outbreak the GTLMs because of that system, which isn't allowed in LM. So all that's going on while you're charging up in the prototype, trying to get by him as the more dirt is kicked up. And there's that, that McLaren. Which is one thing about sports car racing that I have got a massive passion for is the fact that there's so much overtaking and intrigue as yeah. well it's all about the way the traffic and you know for a, I remember uh, when I first came back to it from Formula One yeah. and it was a shock and to me and I'd already done sports car racing for quite a long time uh, how you had to think about the overtaking so far in advance you know you're looking at maybe three four five corners in yeah. advance where you were maybe going to line it up for the overtake and uh, that's a big area as we see a BMW oh. getting sort of squeezed a little bit in the Ferrari taking yeah. very big avoiding action to come out. So he did a good job to get round oh. as uh, Aston goes off again. That's uh, just down at the next corner, the double left hand of the last two yeah. corners and he's gone in a bit deep I would suggest and uh, run straight through the gravel and came out the other side in full rally spec. <laughs> that was a bit of Sebastian Loeb. Yeah it was really. So Thierry still in the lead, Felipe Albuquerque Lovely lad from uh, Portugal. A year ago, I was just seeing a replay of this. I think he did a very good job there. Yeah, he did, but the one thing is that now his radiator conducting is completely yeah. covered in grass, and so therefore he's got to be very careful with the water temperature. Yeah. I think he, he tried to half make the corner. I think in these situations, it's always better just abort very, very early yeah. and then control your speed across the grass to try to minimise what is going to be the damage. And in that situation, you you know, he's got to now be very, very acutely aware of the water temperature because if it rises, it could only do a lap before it's into critical areas. There's the 66 Ferrari, currently running in third place. So just going back to um, the car that you're involved with, um, presumably Simon Dolan's got to do another stint yet, yes. I think. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Now the silver driver has got a minimum. If there's three drivers involved and uh, two of them are gold or above, yeah. then it's a minimum of two hours, 20 minutes over the four hour race duration. So it's, a yeah. well, it's more than 50%, it's so a significant amount. Yeah. And uh, so Simon did a stint there and he will get back in after Felipe has done his stint. Okay, here's our leader coming in with the Thierry A, who is the, the silver gommandeer, hasn't been in the car yet. And uh, maybe this 
will be when he climbs aboard. And Finlay might be uh, timing this pit stop for us as well. But Alan's got his uh, trusty iPhone out. It's the tyre stop, basically. Yeah. I think. Just, just, is that yeah, left? that's a problem with the left rear. Yeah. So it looks like they had a puncture there, uh, or a problem just only with the left rear. Did they change the right rear as well, Andrew? I didn't see no, that. I don't think so. No, I think they just uh, changed the one, and uh, that puts the uh, well, Yota Zytec into the lead. Remember, it uh, won the race. Uh, it was led the race here, and then had uh, problems uh, near the end a year ago. We got some news from Finlay. Yeah, just a little bit on the timing of the stop. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't a representative no, it wasn't. stop from no. the point that they only changed apparently one tyre. Yeah. Here's the car which is leading the uh, GTC category with the Shaitar. And Matt Griffin telling me that he thought this guy was really quick. Matt seems to know all these different Russian Ferrari drivers. Chris Sony, who uh, went so well and led that uh, category uh, the first hour or so, I see it is back into that 81 car and uh, not going quite as quickly as, as Shaitar. And then uh, Richardson lying uh, in uh, third place there. Ollie Webb seems to be getting a hold of it uh, in the Alpine uh, car 36. Uh, he's back into a good rhythm yes. now, just down in the bottom sort of 37 area. Uh, he's a little bit behind due to the pit stops as we see a massive spin oh, a coming down spin. the hill, hill yeah. towards Aquaminerale. Yeah. It's started as it came out the previous corner, more than likely got onto the AstroTurf on the outside of it, and uh, then in a big loop the loop. Very impressive to actually yeah. get it going in the right direction again. Yeah, he's been around a few times that car actually. Uh, here's a battle for position, I would think. No, it's, it's actually Albuquerque that's coming yeah. up, it appears to lap the yeah. number 48 of Gonzalez, who's defending quite vociferously. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's his, his fair point. You know, he, he doesn't want to go a lap down. If you no. go a lap down, then it's it's very tough to actually strategically get it back. But for Albuquerque, he needs to try to get away and make the maximum out of uh, the stint that he can. But there's a bit of smoke blowing off oh, I, I saw that, that car. Yeah. Seems to be as he corners. Yeah, you can see it there coming out yeah. of the back of uh, the... That's not usually a good sign. No, it's, uh, out, the, it's out the left-hand side. Yeah. It's out the blower. No, I don't think that's a good sign at all. No, uh, no and it's getting, know, worse, it's getting worse, significantly that's, worse. I don't think that's going to go much further, that car. And I think he... Do you see him backing off there? Uh, no, no, I do, definitely do not. No, that's... Um, I think that motor's going to be history. They had a problem at the first race as well. Yeah. So it's when when you're behind now, you see smoke. You can smell it, can't you, from the cockpit sometimes? You can smell everything around yeah. about these circuits. At Le Mans, you can smell the hot dogs uh, I've heard getting prepared so as you come yeah. down through the S's yeah. after the Dunlop <laughs> chicane, which if it's about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, I can tell you, it makes yeah. you a bit hungry. But uh, yes, you can. Uh, more if you're in the car behind yeah. than the actual car as he now comes into the pits, which I would think is going to be for into the garage for yeah. a bit of uh, remedial work or alternatively could well, be out the race. Maybe it, it could be a loose pipe, of course. But yeah, but it's what it's lost. It might be a loose pipe where you can connect it again, yeah. but it's what it's actually lost in terms of fluid that's a critical point. Yeah. It's a very slow entry. It is. This Are they going to push that good. back? Yeah. No, trolley jacks are out. Yeah. There's no real speed to this. I think that car is going to be out of the race. Yeah, onto the dollies. Turn it around. Back it up. And uh, maybe we can get Corrine down there to uh, see what the problem is. And we've got a replay here. <laughs> the uh, the Barwell uh, Russian BMW. That's got a lot of grass in the front. You see, that's what you were saying earlier on. Yeah, that's uh, from its little trip through the gravel at, or through the grass at the chicane. But right now, Albuquerque's out in the lead, 26.7 seconds. But that's not necessarily a true state of affairs because of the pit stops, the way pit stops yeah. are. But the Jota car has been able to extend the fuel mileage. They've done a very good job of actually getting good mileage and uh, trying to eke out the lapses. This is oh, all a bit tight. Oh, this is a good battle, isn't it? Well, this is where, you know, oh, traffic... Oh, you got that Ferrari right in the way, though. 
That was very good by uh, Thierry in 46 car. Yeah. Uh, he basically used the traffic to sort of get himself and compromise the other LMP2 and slide round the outside. That's reading the race yeah. and reading the traffic. Yeah, that's uh, Brandela in the uh, 46. I know you've got Albuquerque catching up on uh, 41, okay, and I which think, is McMurray. Uh, we're going to get a uh, pitch report in a moment. And I see Corinne Chandol, he was in the, the commentary box earlier on, he gets around that boy. And uh, we we'll find out what's happening with Murphy. I suggest that Corinne not going to get in the car now. Just getting uh, word that we're going to have an interview in just a moment. And, uh, so Albuquerque's now stuck up behind the Greaves Motorsport car, flashing the lights to try and get through. And uh, it's one of those things, it's a slight element of frustration yeah. by the driver behind. And he's flashing the lights just to yeah. sort of say, look, um, I'm here. But yeah. round down through this section, you know, the guy in front, not very many places to, to overtake time is eking away now he's got a good acceleration oh, and he's pushing there. it yeah so, Felipe has got the bit between his teeth he's done the maneuver yeah, blocked has. him off that's it that was a good acceleration he lined him up pretty well but uh, he needs to now get a stretch on so uh, now we think uh, we can uh, hear from Darren in the Murphy pit and uh, just uh, believe that Corrine is uh, there with uh, Karun Chaydon let's find out what's happening with Team Murphy for LMP2, I'm here with Karun Shandog, and I would like to know what's happening with the car. Uh, we've had a gearbox failure, unfortunately, so it's the end of our day. I mean, it's, uh, it's a shame because, uh, you know, we were going okay at the start, and then Rodolfo had a drive-through penalty, but, um, you know, I think we still had two of our gold drivers to go. We started with a silver, so the strategy was not bad, but um, the gearbox is gone, so we're finished now. Thank you, and good luck for the next race. Well, big disappointment there, so it was gearbox uh, smoke, do you reckon that's yeah. right? Well, there's yeah. lots of smoke coming out of it as yeah. we see a replay when uh, he gets overtaken by Felipe Albuquerque in the Jota car. Huge amount of smoke, it was increasing over the course of the lap, yeah. and that just tightens everything up when he's losing all of that oil. It is unfortunate because, you know, that's a fast car, yeah. and uh, they were very, very competitive last year with Brendan Hartley at the wheel. And, you know, they run a good team, there's no question, but uh, they've got out of the first two races of this championship, I think they've had two DNFs, and that's them out of it completely now. But, you know, change strategy, now you just go for overall victories without any consequences. Yeah. When Karim was in the commentary box, I, I was mentioned, uh, mentioning that Brendan Hartley used this as a springboard to really relaunch his career, because he's been signed yep. by Porsche and doing a great job down there, apparently. Yeah, it's a fantastic springboard it's a great place for a driver to learn the trade of uh, sports car racing and it's the feeder formula for the world endurance championship no question it's one of the reasons that harry tinknell made the move across from the yeah. european formula 3 championship to to this is basically to cut his teeth and understand the intricacies of sports car racing and as we see another pit stop here by 43 it's a full-on tire change yeah i like to think of it as the thinking man's motor racing really there's so much more going on and the strategies and so on yeah, yeah, I'm not sure all the drivers think about it, and, <laughs> and that includes me at times, <laughs> I have to say. As uh, you know, it's as we see the now. Oh, that McLaren, that I think that's, that's the same place where he's gone yeah. off as uh, the car just a few minutes ago. He's got got stuck there. Yellow flags out as they come down in towards Aquamina Rally. That's the one that's been driven by the young Estonian uh, Kevin Cautious by Gregor. Gregoire de Moussier and uh, Jan Gaudi. So uh, I don't think that's going very far. So, the Christian Kleon, with that Formula One experience, just out in the, the blue car you see there. Yeah, he's just exited the pits, that's him out from the beginning of the stint for Christian. ex Peugeot LMP1 driver, yeah. someone I've fought out quite a few races with, uh, wheel to wheel and bodywork to bodywork. Oh, that's oh, a yeah, quick uh, one. Yeah. Very quick. He was lucky he didn't hit the barrier on the inside, but I think he's hit it at the back. And that's why the car was sort of crabbing and not able to drive straight back onto the circuit. But that's a fast, fast corner to lose the rear. Cressoni back in the lead of uh, GTLM. So uh, what a good job that young man is doing. 
So this is one of the big surprises, Alan, you probably don't follow this so closely, the GTLM, um, there's some pretty well-known drivers there. Crisoni is a, is a uh, you call him a, a journeyman, drives the Italian GT Championship. He drives genetics at the Nürburgring 24 hours and things like that. And, you know, not not a highly ranked driver like the Bertolini's of this world. And uh, done a great job, put it, put it on the pole and um, led the class. His teammates got in, he's back in it now, and he's taking it back into the lead of, of that LM category. But you do get names that you're not necessarily yeah. aware of that suddenly come to the right moment in their careers, they get the right experience or whatever it may be. Uh, and uh, then you see them starting to star and get the confidence. Yep. As we've now got a pit stop for the second place car of Thierry. Just... Uh, He's loosening the belts, I think this is yeah, going to be a full in the service, yeah. as we call it, where uh, it's a driver change. Yes, and there's uh, the driver ready. Driver change, uh, fuel and tyres. Yeah, I think it, he's uh, done a good job there. And uh, Gomendi getting in. Yeah, now with an hour and 33 minutes to the end. Gomendi going in. And a lot of single-seater experience, as I said before, raced uh, in that Super League Championship for a long time. He's got the um, Porsche going very slowly. Yeah, uh, but it's going to be close whether uh, that cut that's in the pits of 46 as the Porsche's got a right rear tyre yeah. failure. The rim's still there, but the tyre's deflated, and uh, he's got to be careful now. He's only got a couple hundred metres to go, Yeah. but if the tyre comes off, then it can do quite a wee bit more damage. Yeah, it, it, he's made it look... Yeah. But the odd one with this is coming in to actually stop yeah. in your pit because you can quite easily uh, lose the tyre and then just also slide through your pit because you don't have the braking efficiency. We didn't see it, Alan, but uh, Zytek has been in and Simon Dolan's back at the wheel. Yeah. So uh, it all changed now. So Simon should be in for the last two stints for the last hour and 30 minutes yeah. to go to the end. So he's a guy that's made a lot of money, but um, counts for nothing when you're out there. No, everybody's, lead them out of race. When you put a helmet on, but the battle, this is Ollie Webb right behind yep. them as they're now coming up uh, about halfway around the circuit. Ollie Webb's up to speed because he's got uh, you know a few laps underneath his belt. And this is actually the battle for first position, as we see. It's now coming down into Aquamina Rally. And Simon's already been in the car, so he knows where the circuit is. But it does yep. take about four or five laps just to get the real feel yep. of it. It'll be interesting to see if Simon can oh. hold off Ollie Webb. He was just going to the other side now. They're going either side of the uh, McLaren. Yeah. And uh, that changes the lead. Yeah, that was a little bit of experience from Ollie, yeah. but also just the, the, the understanding of where the tyre is. But now Simon's tucked right up his gearbox. Not an easy place to overtake coming down into this left-hander because uh, it's bumpy on the inside yeah. and you start to lose your braking efficiency very, very quickly if you're stuck up behind the back of someone. So it'll be interesting to see how well Simon Dolan can uh, hang on. Let's see the, the replay, either side of the McLaren. I think the McLaren is a bird's eye view of that one. Yep. Interesting, another British driver we haven't mentioned much, Alan. Ben Barker, who's a star now of the Porsche Super Cup, is in the 86 car. And uh, it's all Ferraris up there in that LM. Um, category at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. GTLMs. Chris Sony still leading it. No one else at the races in reality. Not really. No. David Halliday, the uh, son of the famous French Johnny. singer Johnny Halliday. I think he's still a big star in front. David Halliday is a huge star in yeah, France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is. Uh, he's a massive star, even though he's a little bit older in the years. Yeah. Right now, he still does pull in the crowds. Not very well known in the UK, though. No, no. And that Aston Martin was down in, what, well, about eighth or ninth place. So, uh, nice to see those golf colours, though. They have a battle with two Ferraris coming yeah. along the start. Yeah, this, this is the, I think this is the battle for the, uh, the lead. Yeah, they're lining up for a dive yeah. down the inside into turn one. Was that, was that, that was the battle, was that the GTC battle there? 
So many of these Ferraris. Most of them seem to be run by AF, of course. <laughs> a very, very good team, I have to say. Yeah. They know how to run a racing car. That's 65, I think. Yeah. But you see how they leap the curbs around here. The curbs are yeah. quite big at this circuit. This is an old style circuit and quite aggressive. But uh, they just bounce over them. Only Webb as he, he's yeah, pulled he's away already, three seconds. Yeah, he's eking out the gap a little bit right now, but he has to because if you remember back, uh, Chatan said they had a problem yeah. with the left rear. Yeah. And uh, that's put them, I would think, out of their pit stop sequence. I would expect them to come in for a splash towards the end. Yeah. And if the Zytec uh, can, of Jota can actually get rid of that, then it could swing back their way again. You know, it's still one and a half hours to go and there's a lot of strategy in yeah. play. To some extent, they were looking at this part of the strategy from lap one, as opposed to just in the last little while. Tom Kimber-Smith has sort of finally got into that uh, other Zytec now uh, that uh, but Murray drove for so long. And he's... Uh, Expect, uh, would expect some good lap times from Kimber Smith. Yeah, he's very experienced, Dick Kimber Smith. Well, I remember him racing as a 15 year old in that T car series and, and uh, winning it. You uh, remember everybody starting uh, well, off. I remember, well, well, I remember his dad, Jeff, racing in British touring cars, of course. But there you are. It's a double edged sword sometimes experience. Yeah, I yellow think. flag showing there as he yeah. came down into Aquaman Rally for some reason waved yellow he says a lot of people going off there yesterday can't see exactly what it's for a green flag in the left hand side as they come out so it's somewhere in that bottom section more than likely somebody's gone off on uh, the left hand side but I uh, didn't see what exactly what it was one of the unusual things about this circuit oh, oh, here there we, we are oh, it's oh. that BMW that Russian yeah. and he's so also dropped a little bit of the under yeah. tray of the car well, on the somebody right on the line over it. that's not good yeah one of the unusual things here Alan is that you dive down you can see the houses and things here which you don't normally see at race time unless you're on a street circuit yeah i'll have to be honest i've never actually looked at the houses too much i've always been trying <laughs> no, to concentrate on the road coming up but you see it a lot as you're uh, coming down into the last couple yeah. of corners because there, it basically there's a big wall there and the house is behind it but there's usually yeah. a lot of people standing on the wall with flags and yeah. you know raising their glasses to you as you're blasting past so this is in a park. This is yeah. really in a park, and so therefore, you know, it's right close to the houses. It's close to just generally where everybody else is, uh, you know, living their normal yeah. life, cycling, running, whatever it may yeah. be. And it's very close to the centre of, of Imola, of course, just to just that. A few hundred well, metres away in reality. Yeah, um, Yesterday, I went walking around on the inside of the track yeah. to have a little look, and down at Toss of the Hairpin, where they're just coming yeah. out of now. Uh, there was actually a historic motocross going on in the inside. <laughs> there was old CZs and Husqvarna's and various things from the, you know, 60s and early 70s. And uh, there wasn't a bloke called Arthur Lampkin in braces. No, no, Arthur that? wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wasn't. Yeah, I didn't no. see Roger De Costa no. of uh, later era either. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the Alpine Renault. Uh, they're trying the to avoid. It's actually oh, yeah. the curb that's came away. There's a big sort Is of that? rubber sausage curb there on the inside oh, yeah. safety car now to try to get that curb sorted out. So this is definitely going to swing the strategies of quite a lot of teams right now as the safety car is going to come out while they rectify the curb that the BMW that spun pulled away from the, the inside. In my experience, these sort of things take a little while to fix. It'll be 10 minutes or so, this. Well, they're quite heavy. That's the thing. Yeah. They're big hunks of rubber, so a car can't go near it. And we saw one of them avoiding round and about, and so they've got to sort of get it at least lifted out of the way. Whether they actually refix it or not, I don't know. Depends how the screws are damaged going down and inside. But uh, this will definitely shake things up quite a bit with Olive Webb, who's leading by 22 seconds. Uh, oh, yeah, over that, Simon yeah, Dolan. Yeah. There you see it just getting pulled away. And yeah. also the ones on the right-hand side, as yeah. the Porsche just runs over it, the Ferrari, and everyone's trying to avoid it at that position. So yeah. half of those have gone. So I'd presume they'll just try and get rid of them and get this restarted as soon as possible. Well, I think we might be able to go down to the, the Tyrier pit in a moment. All right, I think the interview's been uh, queued up. But this is what our problem is. And there it is. We thought at first it was a piece off a car, but it's not. And uh, it's that rubber sausage, you call it. But, uh, the baguettes, we actually call baguettes, it. Baguettes, yeah, that's what it is. So Pegasus make a pit stop. And uh, just see who this could really benefit. 
So uh, meanwhile, we can go down into the uh, Tyrier pit then to find out from uh, Corrine what's uh, happening down there. Corrine. For the LMP2 category, I'm here with the car of 46, <laughs> of course, and it's Pierre Thirier. Are you confident with the rest of the race? Évidemment, je suis super content du, du début de course qu'a fait mon coéquipier et, et mon propre relais. Malheureusement, une, une petite crevaison euh, mal placée en termes de stratégie euh, nous a fait reculer un peu, mais on y croit encore. Thank you very much. Alors, so he's very confident and uh, he thinks he's going to go, go to the end of the race. And of course, he was happy with the beginning of the race, but not after because of the problem with the tie. Yeah, he had a puncture yeah. there, and he was, he was uh, very happy with the way that it went for his teammate until that particular point. But I think right now, coming back to who's this going to help, it's definitely going to help Oli Webb with the Alpine because if they were out of sync with their pit stops, mm. this gives them the fuel mileage back that they had lost by that early stop. And so it plays into their hands. Whether it's enough to get rid of that splash at the end, I don't know, we'll only find out in a few laps time. But uh, it definitely plays into their hands and sort of loses a little bit to the Zypec. When you're doing one of these slow laps, you're using only half the fuel? Something like that? Yeah, it's approximately half the fuel on a, a safety car lap as they're now doing what appears to be a wave by to get everybody lined up again. But the thing is, it's very difficult because you're stuck behind the safety car. You're doing yeah. approximately 100 kilometers per hour uh, as an average. You're trying to clean the front tire. You're trying to keep the temperature into the brakes and into the tire as well, uh, as well as trying to save fuel. And so it really is a tricky, tricky thing to achieve it because when you're basically scrubbing side to side, yeah. it doesn't put temperature back into the tire. What it does is it cleans off all the pickup that uh, the you know the 100 degrees Celsius tire that you're running on just sucks up mm. uh, tire from the road, the little bits of debris round and about, and it cleans all of that rubbish off. Because if you don't, then you get massive vibration and you lose a significant percentage of your grip. And sometimes you never get the grip back. And here you can see 36, uh, Ollie Webb pushing the Ferrari yeah. head on, saying, look, it's up, boy. Yeah, he's just not going quick enough for this. No, last year in Brazil, Tom Christensen, uh, myself and Loic Duval were leading the race, and we lost about half a lap because of the situation with a car in front of us under safety car going significantly slower than what uh, he was allowed to do. Because he wants to close right up on that yeah, safety car. Safety car's here, it's not. Yeah, right. here it is now, yeah. And that, that piece is still out there in the road. Yeah. You see on the right where it's been ripped away, of course. Yeah, there's two so, pieces there. Yeah. It's heading through the road, actually. Yeah. So slightly unusual choice of safety car. So the longer this takes, the uh, more it's going to play into the hands of... Um, of Dolan, you think? Sorry, say it again. The, the more this goes on, it played more into the hands of, of, of Dolan? I think it's actually the other way around. Oh, is it the other it way around, right? yeah. It brings the losses that uh, the well, Oli Webb well, Alpine well, car by pitting well, early well, yeah. on the first stop, not getting the fuel mileage, it gets them potentially out of their splash and dash at the end. Yeah. Now, yeah. this is surmising a little bit. We don't know their fuel numbers. Uh, you know, it's not a published item, but I uh, would suggest that looking at it, it sort of feeds into their hands a little bit more. Ultimately, yeah. safety cars, you win some, you lose some. It's like penalty kicks in football. Yeah, yeah. And through the course of a year or a couple of years, you know, I've won a lot of safety uh, races because of the safety car coming at the right time for me, and I've lost a, quite a few as well. Yeah. I just wonder if it might help Greaves with Kimber Smith. Because that's going to... Because he was quite away, it was almost a lap down. Yeah, yeah. It, it, well, it pulls you back in. Yeah, the one thing that's very tricky right now is if you're at the back of the line, then, you know, there's about 30, just over 30 cars still running. And uh, round here with all of the corners, it's not as if you can blast past them down the two yeah, straights yep. before you get to the twiddly bits. And so you could quite easily lose 10, 12 seconds on the first lap just because of the traffic of all the GTs if you're at the back of them. You know, you look at the huge lineup here, but I don't know exactly on the track where Kimbersmith is. Track position is very important at a place like this. Never mind the fact that yeah. when you are trying to open so it, look, the marshals there just trying to presumably get the boys to stay over so they can just sort that problem out. 
Well, as well as sort that particular problem out with the curbing, what they try to do is take advantage of this time to clean up any debris that might be lying somewhere else yeah, around and yeah. about the circuit. And so there's marshals and sweepers and There's another like bit we saw there that Finlay's element is his son is, is with us. He's and, a uh, spotter. He's a very good spotter. He's got sharper eyes than He me. certainly has. All Somebody pops has into the pits yeah. now using this time to actually do it. I have to ask you the question, and uh, I'll put you on the spot here. Is uh, you going to become a racing dad? Who, me? Yes. I don't know. No I think it's a tough, tough job, I've got <laughs> to be honest with you. Being a <laughs> racing driver, never mind a racing dad, as you now see them, and they are going yeah. to fix it. You can see they're coming back on, and they've got a big uh, drill to yeah. screw it back down in. Yeah, I love the enthusiasm of the oh Italians no. for their motorsport. You can just see it there in, in their body language, can't you? Oh, it's the passion for the yeah. whole thing. They love all of this. They love a little bit of action. Yeah. They love entertainment. And, uh, you know, hey, what's going on? Yeah. It's fantastic. Uh, but, the, you know, everybody round and about this circuit enjoys it. Yeah. Well, there's the, the car run by Mark Lemmer, the Barwell run Team Russia car. They also run a yeah, similar yeah. car for a Curie Cos. Certainly do. The team yeah. that uh, started me off in karting and gave me a lot oh. of uh, support. Uh, all the way through my career. Hugh McKeag still gives me a lot of support. Yeah, terrific as guy. As well, yeah. So They've uh, got back on. It's been a bit of a scrappy afternoon for this particular car. Yeah. Uh, okay. They've had a few offs on the way. That was one of the big problems, of course, in racing. You, you want to get the budget together. Sometimes the budget comes from guys with not much experience or sometimes not much talent either. But it's the only way you can go racing. You just got to try and train them to, to, to be better racing car drivers. Everybody must learn. Everybody's got to make mistakes to learn. You know, the, how do you know where the limit is until you go over it? The thing is that unfortunately it's quite public when you go over it in a race like this uh, because it's live on television. However, that's just part of uh, learning the ropes of what you're doing. As they're actually doing a very quick job in getting this curb back into position. As uh, the cars are now coming up to the top of the hill before dipping down to, to see it. But they've pretty much got one of the curbs all back into place. As I can see on one of the, the cameras to the side, not, not what you're watching. Yeah, but uh, we the all highlights again. This is from earlier on. Yeah, there was a bit of squeezing going on. This is That's that BMW we just saw yeah. down a few moments. It's a Murphy prototype car yep. smoking with a gearbox problem just before it went out. And there's that BMW going round again. Terrier on the charge. This was a big, big spin. He went off backwards there and hit the barrier, bounced out. He doesn't. The nose doesn't come out that by sticking first gear and no. accelerating quickly. That's that's bouncing off a wall. There's that Ferrari we've seen going round more than once. Suddenly bit, didn't it, then, at the last minute? And then the BMW again. Short time unlucky, ripping part of the turn away. Yeah. This is uh, race, current race leader, the Alpine. One of the drivers in that uh, BMW is a guy called Tima Sanderov. And I tried to Google him, and he might be a guy that runs something called the Ocean Group, um, who uh, they funded the whole of the, that James Bond film, The Question of Solis, oh, and a very wealthy Russian, if he's the right, to, uh, the right teamer, which I think he is. Sometimes a bit difficult to, to line up their business. I have some very rich gentlemen in this race. Two or three that um, yes. well, well, they can buy the racetrack, that's for sure. And probably the grid. Yeah, probably the grid. Well, I think the job is is done, isn't it? And uh, yeah, there'll be there's a point on the circuit, a pre-arranged point on the circuit that uh, the race director and also the drivers agree where they will put the safety car lights out to alert everybody, so you've got enough time to get the tires up to temperature and the brakes back up to temperature, and uh, that's when the lights will go. I'm not sure where that is for the circuit, but usually it's about half a lap. And so could you keep an eye on the lights there and about half a lap, so probably down in Aquaman Alley where the, the problem was with the curbing. Uh, and then that's when they would switch it back and you see the lights go out and then you know it's going to be green next time past. We haven't given a, a name check really to the AT, AT racing um, by AF Corsa Ferrari of Alexandra Talconcita Junior and uh, 
his uh, father, who are driving with Pierre Kaffer. They're up there in uh, fourth place. I think they're based in Austria, but I believe they come from Belarus. Amazing where racing drivers come from these days. Yeah, it is Pierre Kaffer, my teammate in 2004 in the first of uh, the European Le Mans Series yep. championships with Audi. He also had a win at Sebring. He won the Sebring yeah, 12 hours. Yep. First win for me there, actually, in his first win in 2004. And his career sort of went into to decline. I wasn't really quite sure why. I think he, he went into DTM with Audi, which wasn't the right category yep. for him. Safety car is in this lap. We've got notification. Yep. And it's going to be in this lap, so it's going to be going back to green. Right now, Webb is 1.79 seconds, but critically two GT cars ahead of second place Simon Dolan. Yeah. There is Ollie Webb. So of course, he, very, very inexperienced in this sort of racing. Yeah, but he's pretty experienced in other well, things. Otherwise, he is, yes, as you say. So we've He's got, got to be careful. He cannot overtake, and I think he has. He's just overtaken the safety car before the line yeah. that allows him to do it. And so go watch for that. He's got to be very, very careful. That's a critical point as they pass the green. So now, as you can see, with the speed of the GT cars, just out, out accelerating uh, the third or the second place overall, Zytek. See what this Zytek can do. So difficult to get by, as you say, the speeds are so... I, I, th I really think these LMP2 cars could do with another 30 or 40 horsepower, which you could easily do by, by opening up the engine as far as the air that's allowed into them. Or you slow down the GT cars, whichever oh, way, you slow, it doesn't oh, matter you do that, one yeah. way or the other. The yeah. thing is that the speed differential, I am always of the opinion, should be more on the straights than in the corners, but it's uh, swinging the other way around. We've had it in the LMP1. You see drivers now weaving just to try yeah. and clean up the tyre at a higher speed. Tristan Gomedy in uh, third place, and he's a pretty fast runner still. And uh, although he's done a, a lot of single-seater races and, and won a lot of single-seater races, he's also very experienced in this kind of uh, event as well. So he's one to watch for. And only five seconds now between the top three. And uh, we're looking at the top five, it's only 10 or 11 seconds. So the LMP2 cars that were in that queue finding their way past the various GT machines. So Ollie Webb managed to, uh, the result of all that, he's got, got a, a 3.7 uh, second lead at the moment. tight down into the yeah. first corner here. There's discretion and there's valor and there's something in between. Yeah. It's fine in the in-between really, isn't it? Well, that's a hard thing. Yeah. That is a very, very hard thing because these races can be won by seconds or tenths of seconds and if you're on the wrong end of it, you know, one half lap behind a, a GT car and that can swing it at the end of the race. Yeah. Not sure if it will today, but it's always better to be on your side as opposed to the one taking the risk to find it back. So here we got uh, at the moment in the lead, Ollie Webb with all that experience in uh, Renault 3.5. We've got so-called, what I like to call entrepreneur driver in second place. We've got a, a seasoned old pro in Gomondi with a lot of single seat success. And then we've got a guy in fourth place who uh, has well, driven for the Red Bull team, no less. Uh, and of course, Jagger would be for that. And then, uh, then we've got a couple of silvers, and then we've got Tom Kimber Smith. Uh, so it's an interesting mix amongst those. Cressoni still leads the uh, GTLM class, and now in the lead of GTC is the uh, 71 car. And uh, that's popped up there, and that's the SMP racing. That's the, that's the car driven by uh, Kirill Lady Jin. Alexi uh, Basov, but at this moment it's got uh, Luca Persiani at the wheel. And I can see um, a Pacini right behind him. So, lots of traffic out there, which has been the, the story of this race, really. And 
Webb just pulling a bit more away from uh, Dolan. Yeah, I have to say Simon's just on a really good yeah. lap, 38-0. It's only three and a half tenths of a second behind Ollie Webb. So the gap basically stabilized at four seconds on this particular lap. It's going to be traffic related, Yeah. you know, from now on. It's who gets through the traffic the best and the cleanest. I mean, you, you've been brought in to, to, to mentor Felipe there, um, obviously as part of the Audi family, and also uh, Harry Technology, uh, a, a bit of a protege of yours. Have you worked with Simon at all as part of this package? Yeah, Simon, um, I first met just at the end of last year at this race, actually, the final round of it in Paul Rickard. And uh, we've spoken, I think Harry Tinknell's been the one that's actually been doing the majority of uh, this sort of help with, with Simon. And, uh, you know, Harry's very good at translating what he does onto the circuit to someone else. Yeah. And uh, so they've been working pretty closely. And so far, you know, you have to say that for someone who's got a day job, then uh, yeah. he's, he's yeah, extremely and a, good. And a lot That's of, the thing. A lot of pressure as well, of course. Well, a significant amount of pressure. Also, the fact that, you know, as a silver, you've got to do a significant proportion of the race. Uh, it's, you know, from my point of view, I give it a little bit of guidance if I, I feel that it's something that can maybe help. But uh, in reality, I think uh, Harry's the one that's yeah. been doing the, the good work there. And how's he enjoying this uh, this switch to a, a different form of racing from a hectic world of Formula 3? Oh, well, not really that this isn't hectic, of course. Well, this is hectic, <laughs> there's no question. But, you know, these are big boys' cars. Yeah. And uh, he's really enjoying it. You know, the first time he drove the car was last year in Aragon in a test. And immediately, in about the fourth or the fifth lap, he was quick. And then I spoke to the engineer after the test. And he said that uh, the thing that was clear was when there was a bit of traffic up ahead, he didn't hesitate, he just banged down the inside, clean yeah. tidy, gone. And I think that uh, this fits his style and mentality. He's a very clever, clever guy. Yeah. And he thinks about what he's doing a lot and about the driving and about the setup, but also the strategy. And I think this will suit him extremely well, especially as uh, the way that sports car racing is developing into the future. Yeah, well, of course, we're all looking forward to Lamar. It'll be a strange feeling for you, Alan, I suppose, not racing there. But, you know, sure. you've got plenty to keep your mind yeah, um, no, involved. And, uh, as I understand it, um, you're, you're going to act as the, uh, use a big word, the interlocutor between the drivers and, and, and the engineering team. Yeah, especially in car three, because uh, that's the least experienced yeah. car. And, you know, Audi's a big, big team. But uh, if I can put a, a few words, Dindo Capello and I, uh, obviously, have got a few years of experience <laughs> underneath our belts. And uh, Dr. Ulrich recognised that. And he wants to try to utilise it the best way possible. And I was always very strong in pushing the the driver's point of view. Yeah. And uh, so they've asked if I would maybe do that a little bit more now that I've got a bit more time in my hands and go and watch it. Which is quite nice because, uh, you know, I can sit there and listen, get involved to the extent, but ultimately uh, I also will, you know, have the ability to step back out of it and uh, relax a little bit more, maybe enjoy Le Mans in a different way. Yeah, yeah. And of course, quite a lot of these cars will be in Le Mans. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I mean, this is, is, is quite a nice little curtain raiser for the big race. The uh, test in two weeks' time, the, the race in a month. Well, Le Mans is such a different, different race, different circuit. Everything is unique around yeah. there, and that's something that uh, I think is difficult to describe. The first time I went there, I was shocked by it. As a driver, <laughs> I remember going down into the first yeah. chicane and uh, felt like I was on warp factor three speed. Yeah. You know, I'd been driving Formula One cars for a long, long time by then. And uh, it was still significantly quicker and more daunting than anything I had ever been to in my life. Yeah, great racetrack, great atmosphere. Not there isn't a super atmosphere here in uh, Italy, in Imola. One of the other world's great racing tracks. There's the... Uh, the 81 Cressoni Ferrari. Yeah, this is a Mark Ferrari that have been sort of rumoured. Uh, the president, Di Monte Zemolo, has spoken about Le Mans in very effervescent he way. He has recently, lately. yes. And uh, he's, he's, we've got uh, the race leader, Ollie Webb, oh. into the pits with an hour and five minutes to go. So that is looks like a driver change. He's loosening the top belts. And uh, that means that they will not be able to go to the end of the race without another stop. Uh, roughly they can do about 50 minutes on a tank of fuel so if they do that now they've still got to come in for an extra one that strategy just hasn't worked out for them at all has it yeah i need to sit down i didn't see the whole race uh, in terms of the strategy point of view i need to sit down where it and look at where it did go but uh, with an and five they can't run to the end unless they're on pace car uh, map which i doubt they'll be able to do 
Uh, how much do you lose on, on, a, on a lap? The, what's the vector coming in and out then with, with, the, with the splash and dash? Because I suppose the, the splash only well, takes 10 seconds or so. It depends what your splash is, if it's yeah. one lap or if it's 10 laps of fuel. And so therefore you can roughly say around here, probably a second and a half per lap of fuel going into the tank. Yeah. And so with uh, probably 15 laps, so you're looking at maybe 10 seconds of fuel, as you said, you wouldn't change the tires for that. And uh, so you would want to just try and get on with it. And you're looking at then a uh, 40 second difference as we see the 95 car. That's one we've seen going through. Uh, the he's done a few that a few times, yeah. And he's back on his way. Back on his way and uh, dropped down to sixth place. So yeah, because it's, it's all been pretty tight, yeah. just as it was at Silverstone. It's yeah. great Safety racing. Car as well, pulled them all back together. Well, that means that he could be in a little bit of traffic. So Dolan back into the lead as a result of that pit stop with Gomendi some uh, seven seconds behind. And Cleon third place, another three seconds back. So this is still tight. We're we we got one hour to go, three quarters of the way through the race now, all but uh, three minutes, and it's still looking very close indeed. Yeah, it is. In uh, GT uh, LM, Cressoni still leads from uh, the Russian Shaitar, Richardson is third. And, and the, uh, the younger, the, the father and son outfit from Belarus. In, uh, that Ferrari of Pons. And I just noticed that Matt Griffin has finally got in that 55 car, which uh, we saw pushed back into the uh, garage at one stage. And uh, Matt Griffin, who won the uh, GTLM uh, category here a year ago with Ram Racing, and uh, along with Johnny Bowden, which helped them uh, take that title. Yeah, it's been a bit disappointing for that team because they had such a dominant first year yep. uh, with Johnny and Matt uh, winning this championship, European champions at the first attempt, but stepping up to the World Endurance Championship, Rams struggled a little bit to reform that pace. And I think uh, some of the budget's been a bit tight as well. They'll be at Le Mans though, and I suggest they might run strongly at Le Mans. It's a, a very talented team there run by, uh, by Dan Shufflebottom. Yeah, I think missing the Spa race is going to be tough for them to uh, come uh, back from. Think, yeah. There's no question about it, but uh, you know, they've got a, a good group as you see and uh, that's a race that you've got to think long term not just think short term but it's good they're going to be there persiani in the uh, 71 ferrari leading gtc from uh, pacini who's got a long uh, career in racing one of the two brothers and uh, how close are they not much difference between those and quite seesawry going on in that GTC category. Sometimes uh, we, we concentrate on what's going on at the front, of course, we do with the LMP2s, but there are these other battles going on. Yeah, but being in Italy, the yeah. GT battles are all with Ferraris at the they front, are. as you would yeah. expect. But then again, can you imagine getting through post race scrutineering if you <laughs> weren't in a Ferrari? No. <laughs> Joking apart on that one. The Sony in the LM category leading by seven seconds from uh, Chatar now, Chatar. Finley is off for an ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Did you give him some money? <laughs> I think he takes it out of my wallet. When I'm, I'm sure he doesn't. Yeah, I'm sure he does. <laughs> he's anything like his dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are Scottish after all. And he's Monegasque. Yeah. <laughs> so young George Richardson, uh, that's an interesting story in the uh, JWM motorsport car. Uh, 22 year old to uh, went over to America to to race but uh, he's back here now in uh, Europe let me see the two of McLarens running together then the Macwood insurance car familiar colors we see so often from the IMSA performance team at Le Mans and uh, Ali Day just uh, getting out of the car the uh, singer-songwriter had a few different professions in this race with, with uh, that, uh, we had an interview earlier on with our, our footballing uh, man. Mr. Bartes. Yeah, and he was enjoying himself. He didn't probably look at his lap time. He's doing a pretty good job, actually. Yeah. Uh, he's used to having something in his hand, with a big ball, but uh, now yeah. he's got a steering wheel on it. He's two big balls now, really. <laughs> <laughs> Leave you to say that. Yeah, one. I know. But with uh, uh, you know, that's going to be an additional thing looking forward with Sir Chris Hoy as well. Yeah, well, they, they say that Nissan will bring him to Le Mans, I suppose, next year. 
I think he'll be there this year. He can't keep Liam. himself away from no. the racing circuit, which is fantastic to see. Yeah, you, you know him, Alan, presumably. Chris yeah, Hall. yeah, he's, yeah. Uh, he's uh, definitely one of uh, the Scottish sporting icons. Yeah, as you are indeed. Uh, no, with just one hour to go. Yeah. I must say that I'm going to have to leave you. I need Alan, to get it's back been down to the pits. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's been fantastic having you here and Finley as well. I think he could be a, maybe he could be a commentator rather than a racer. Do you think? Not so no, much. I don't know about that. No. Know about <laughs> what do you reckon, Finley? Commentary or racing? Racing. racing. Oh, oh my goodness. Right, okay. That's a bad sign. Don't tell me. How's your checkbook? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking you could sponsor him. Oh uh, yeah, thanks very much. Oh, I think some of these really rich guys, maybe the guy leading the race, could do that. <laughs> thanks very much. Terrific. Take care. Thanks for having, uh, coming in and joining us, and it's great to have you here. And um, well, we'll watch your. Your, your car is in the lead at the moment. See how it transpires in the uh, last 50 minutes or so. Well, it's Thank going to you, be a Alan. tough one, so uh, I'm sure it'll be pretty tight at the front, but we'll see which way comes out top. Thank you very much. So, Alan McNish there, the uh, winner of Le Mans last year, of course. And uh, Finley, thank you very much. Finley has got crash out on, ready to go back in the pits. And uh, this race will enter the last uh, 50 odd minutes. Dolan. Gomendi, Cleon, drivers with all kinds of different experience. But uh, also doing a very good job out there at the moment is the uh, 24 car. And uh, just uh, watching that Sebastian Loeb racing with, uh, we had Jan Chirouz in that car early on, Vincent Capellier driving it now. Just uh, those two sharing that car. Surprising look at Capellier uh, with the uh, relatively um, short CV in racing, doing a, a good job. The man from uh, Le Mans. He's been around a long time, uh, 38 year old. Uh, back in 1996, our series, sort of mini versions of these cars, really. But uh, doing some very good lap times at the moment. So. Uh, the big interest really is uh, the fuel strategies now. We know that uh, the uh, Alpine Renault cannot go the distance. We have to make at least uh, one more stop, come in for a splash. Everybody, of course, playing it fairly close to their chest. Crisoni still leading in that Ferrari and in second place the, uh, the 66 car so here's some highlights coming up and uh, may uh, feature quite a few uh, spins from various Ferraris and uh, BMWs that was the the 80 car going off I suspected we see some uh, problems from the Barwell uh, Russian car. There was a, a move as the uh, gearbox started to go down on the uh, Murphy car. Another spin from the uh, BMW. Thierry on the charge, did a very good job, Pierre Thierry. And then the 95 car, we've seen that going around a few times. The uh, Delanier and... Spirazzioli car. There are McLaren had uh, LMP cars all around it and the Alpine in the lead and the BMW has another moment and that ripped out that curb which brought out the safety car. There it is, the little Peugeot. Closed everybody up again. Maybe helped some people with their fuel windows. And the 81 car still in the lead of uh, GT. And uh, now in the uh, 66 car in second place is uh, Daniel Zampieri, an Italian with a, a good track record. And I suspect there might still be a bit of a battle going on there. Matt Griffin 
moved uh, his Ferrari up into uh, sixth place. The 71 car is, in fact, Matt Griffin's 14th. I should say the leading uh, GTC car is 15th. And uh, a battle actually they're nose to tail at the moment. Uh, Persiani and uh, Piccini. So GTC is far from over. And the Russian Markasov is in third place. So Simon Dolan in the lead has a three second margin over Tristan Gomendy, who uh, took a second out of him on the last lap. Clean in third. The uh, Le Mans racing instructor Capillier is in uh, fourth place from uh, Pierre-Luc Chatin, who is back in that Alpine. As you heard, they had some, uh, some uh, problems with that car, held up in the pits. Michel Fry is in sixth place. Tom Kimber-Smith is still down there in seventh, and Julian Shell in the uh, Pegasus team car. He owns that team. He is in eighth place. But Gomendy, no question at out, is uh, on a charge, chasing after Dolan. Let's see what Dolan's got. The, uh, the entrepreneur. And uh, uh, the 43. And at 41. Simon Dolan then in the uh, white, red and black. Zytek finding a way past the uh, Ferrari. Traced by uh, the Gomendi, who's brought the uh, lead down to 1.8 seconds now. And uh, while well, the battle is really on, I think. Just uh, call a quick shot there at Gomendi. Just separated by that uh, Ferrari, the one that's uh, been a bit wayward. So, Simon Dolan, team owner, looking for uh, a victory here after the disappointments of Silverstone and the disappointment here a year ago, it has to be said. And uh, amateur driver with uh, a seasoned old pro in uh, Gomedy right behind him now in the on-rope chassis, badged as a Morgan. Christian Klein in third place is only uh, another three seconds back and now the gap's under a second as uh, Gomendy closes down on uh, Simon Dolan. You see how well he can use the traffic here to uh, try and keep Gomendy behind him, but it's going to be a tough task and I can see uh, Gomendy going into the lead in the next couple of laps here in the uh, Thierry by TDS machine. Pierre Thierry doing a great uh, middle stint in that and uh, Ludovic Baddy, well, going strongly at the start. And Dolan under big pressure here. With 50 minutes remaining. And uh, Dolan bouncing it off the curbs a little bit. And uh, as Alan McNish said before he left, uh, in the talking with his driver, Harry Ticknell, about uh, technique in this. And you can see there from our graphic how the time has come down. And uh, the battle is on this after over three hours. Here we are with the first two just separated by two or three car lengths. Simon Dolan passes the pits again. And Gomendy looks for the inside, and Dolan, uh, Dolan uh, shuts the door on him as well he might. Dolan hanging on at the moment, but nose to tail around this fabulous Imola race circuit. Undulating here, up and down. Let's see what Gomendy. Only two or three places where can probably get past here around a lap. And 
Morris uh, Simon makes a mistake. And uh, actually, they're pulling away a bit from uh, Clean and the others. So uh, the battle is definitely between uh, this pair. And of course, there's the, the traffic. They've got a whole group of Ferraris now in front of them. And let's see uh, if Simon Dolan can uh, use this traffic now to uh, try and put a bit of space between him and the hard charging Gomedy, who's uh, looking down the outside. Gomedy trying to uh, go down the inside now and doesn't do it. There, where that circuit uh, repair was made. And now here we got this. Uh, group of Fer Ferraris as they come past the pit's entrance once again. And you see there's not that much speed differential between those uh, GT cars as uh, Dolan flashes his lights. And, uh, Simon Dolan, a lot of experience in uh, these cars now. The 45-year-old, uh, they call him the Twitter Dragon. And uh, Certainly uh, getting a bit of it if I got past the uh, Mamut Porsche and put that between him and uh, Gomendy. And he's going to dive inside the uh, Ferrari there, but I think uh, Gomendy comes with him. Yes, he does. And very nearly touches the uh, Ferrari, actually, as they go up the hill. But another good move from, uh, from Dolan. former accountant, now uh, an investor in a lot of companies. And uh, there again, you see the Gomendy uh, had a bit of trouble getting past and uh, Simon Dolan has uh, managed to uh, get a little bit of a breathing space there as uh, they come against uh, Persiani, who's leading the GTC category. And he's got his own uh, race to uh, run and he's got Pacini chasing after him. so. Uh, He's been concentrating on that, but uh, Simon Dolan, there he is, and uh, he's put a bit of space between himself now, a couple of car lengths, and uh, certainly responding very well here. The 38-year-old uh, entrepreneur, there they are down in the uh, Tyrier pit. And uh, see the... Uh, the lead has now opened up to 1.7 seconds. And now uh, Simon Dolan has got another a couple of Ferraris, and uh, in the GTC category, actually, Pacini has just gone uh, past Persiani to uh, lead that. And uh, Clemenata has taken the lead uh, back, I, th I think, is in the lead of the, with the 81 car in uh, LM. So there have been lots of uh, changes there. Uh, there we see uh, the Tyrier car. And uh, now he's closed up again. And, uh, whoa, Dolan, a bit of a close call there with the uh, Porsche. And now that it will nose to tail again. Down the hill. And do they both go past the Porsche? Yes, they do. Dolan still under pressure, bouncing it off the curbs. And just uh, a car's length between the pair of them. 45, 46 minutes remaining here. And Simon Dolan, well, could be the drive of his life if he could hold off Tristan Gomendy as they go past another Ferrari. Past the pits once more, and the team will be delighted to see that uh, Simon Dolan is hanging on. Let's see if he can use the traffic. Got a bit of uh, empty uh, space in front of him at the moment. And uh, can this help Gomendy? The uh, blue flags are waved, and Gomendy goes down the inside, and the helmets touch, and Gomendy goes through. And the experience of Tristan Gomendy, professional driver, pays off there. But, uh, well, Dolan really worked hard to try and keep him behind. And, uh, well, they're, they're cheering in the pit, but it's not all over yet. And, uh, of course, we're not sure of the exact fuel situation. Did they touch there? Well, it's very close indeed. Great resistance from Simon Dolan, but Tristan Gomedy goes through. Now, let's see if uh, Dolan can uh, hang on there. 
And uh, while all that's going on, Clean has uh, closed up on them. And in fact, uh, Capillier is uh, hanging on as well. Got uh, Porsches out there, but uh, in the GT. Oh, and we got one uh, stopped on the uh, circuit. It's one of the uh, Kessel cars tries to fire it up again. You see the lights coming on. And it's the 80 car, which had uh, for a while, well, for much of the race, led. Actually, that category has got it fired up again. But it slipped right down the order. And it's the other Kessel car, which leads at the moment. And uh, Bertolini is finally climbed into the uh, 72. And that is now up in third place. So, Andrea Bertolini, factory Ferrari driver in GTs, hugely experienced and a great success, of course, over the years in the FIA GT Championship in uh, Maseratis. And uh, I think we could still have some fireworks uh, in LM as uh, Bertolini really fires it up. He's going two or three seconds faster than the two drivers in front of him. Meanwhile, the uh, Capellier Charroux's car is in, and they're filling it up, and that uh, that means they can go to the finish from there. The uh, 24 car, currently shown in fourth place. The uh, Praga car team, uh, car manufacturer name on the rear of the car. We've got uh, Ferrari also being worked on there. But... Uh, Clemata in the 81. Ferrari leading that category still. Might not stay that way. I think uh, Bertolini is about to move up to second place in that class. He's the man to watch for. And in GTC now, it's uh, Puccini in the uh, 60 who is uh, leading. So Caminata, Zampieri, Bertolini, Pons, Caffa and Griffin. Those are the uh, Ferraris that are first, second, through to sixth. There's the uh, Zampieri car. And uh, right behind him, Bertolini, look. And he's uh, going to pass him surely. Going up the hill. Good battle there. And uh, they are not far. I think how far are they behind uh, that 81? Castle, the, there's the uh, clean car. That's in for its final fuel. And uh, while all that has been going on, we've uh, had a, a space. And the Tyrier car was just looking where that was. It had gone off our charts and problems there with the Tyrier car. Gormandit must have had a problem. I just saw he went uh, drop down the order and uh, just trying to work out where he was. And there he is in the pits. And uh, maybe we can get Kareen down there to try and find out what's going on. So all of a sudden, it swung back in the favour of Jota Racing. Final pit stops for these uh, LMP2s. And they're still uh, working on that car. Uh, what a blow for uh, Thierry. And hopefully we can get, uh, get Karine down there to find out what's going on. So all of a sudden it swung back in uh, Dolan's order and uh, car 24 has got a stop go, unsafe release from the pit, so that's going to hurt that. 
So it's all happening here. Gomedy down in uh, sixth place at the moment. I just mentioned that, that's a stop-go penalty for the 24. We're watching the uh, 36 at the moment with uh, Chatin back at the wheel. And uh, now we can go uh, Now we can go down to uh, Corrine Lima. Uh, Corrine has been finding out what's going on there. She is uh, with uh, Baddy. Um, I'm with Ludovic Baddy here. And uh, can you explain us what's happening with the car? Yeah, I think we have a big problem on the brake disc on the front of the car. And uh, we don't know why, but uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, hole in the disc. And uh, it's, we don't know why, because uh, it's the first time it's happened, uh, but we don't know. Thank you. Well, that sounds very unusual. So a, a braking problem brought the car into the garage from the lead after... Tristan Gormandy worked his way past Simon Dolan, who gave uh, pretty good uh, resistance. And there is Simon Dolan now, still having to work his way. How many Ferraris has he overtaken in this race? And uh, Capillier, the uh, Le Mans-based driver, not really one of the uh, big stars of uh, LMP2 racing, in uh, second place. And uh, he a three seconds I think we must have while all that was going on I think uh, Dola must have been in for a splash of fuel and uh, I think the Thierry car is going to come out the pits in a moment so everything happening here as uh, the Praga back car comes back in and uh, Dolan in the lead. Oh, that's uh, there's the uh, the 46 on the dollies and back out again. But uh, must have lost uh, over a lap now. Christian Clean moves up to second place. And so again, Simon Dolan has got to uh, resist the pressure of a professional driver and one with the considerable Formula One experience. And a lot of sports car experience as well. Camata in the uh, 81 is uh, still in the lead. And uh, Bertolini is in second place, but he's uh, some 20 second, 26 seconds behind. He's got Tony Sampieri, who he overtook, still right in his wake. And then Pierre Kaffer is in the next Ferrari. Let's see what, what Dolan can do now with the uh, with, uh, clean after him. There's the uh, 46 car of uh, Gomendy back in the race. So, Simon Dolan. Oh dear, the 34 is off. I wonder if that's going to bring out a uh, yellow. So the race performance, uh, Michel Frey, Frank Mayo car is definitely uh, stuck. Beached there. And Frey at the wheel, the uh, Swiss driver. Top of your screen, the positions right through to uh, 37th and last place. Well, at the moment, we've just got a yellow flag, uh, a local yellow flag down there at turn eight, as they call it on the uh, monitor. Clean taking time out of uh, Dolan. Chata in uh, third place. Yellow flag, sir. So. Wave down there. That's uh, down in the Villeneuve corner area. There's uh, Gomedy trying to make up for lost time.
GTC. The 60 car has been in. And uh, they put the, uh, the Danish hard charger around with that Formula 2 experience uh, back in the car. So uh, he should be doing a, a good job there. Mikkel, Mikkel Mack. Bodywork uh, hanging off the Pegasus car. As, uh, I've got a sneaking suspicion that uh, they still got problems with the braking of that. There's uh, our leader, Simon Dolan, going through. Sharing the car, of course, with the uh, professionals of Felipe Albuquerque and Harry Ticknell. I'm sure he's uh, oh, we've got a, a problem there with that GTC. Going to have problems all day long, that yellow Ferrari. Front puncture, he's going to have to limp it back to the pits. So, Simon Dolan back in the lead for the Sam Hignett run. Joker Racing team, uh, he makes it back to the uh, pits. And that tyre almost off the rim, and it does, in fact, depart. And I think it was the whole wheel, actually, because I thought I saw some uh, silver. Yeah, indeed it is. But the car was stiff enough to get it into the pits. But uh, not really an issue there. So, just to recap, Simon Dolan for... Uh, team that he finances go to racing in the lead from Christian Clean, former Red Bull driver the gap is down to 1.37 seconds Pierre Chatter in the Alpine despite their uh, problems he is in third place Pierre is fourth Kimber Smith now is in uh, fifth spot Albeit a lap down on the leaders, and it's Christian Shell. Comedy in the Tyrier car is also a lap down. And uh, leading, and it's a, a big surprise, really, this. Leading the uh, GTE, the uh, Kessel Racing, a team founded by the former, or briefly, Formula One driver, Loris Kessel. And uh, to say that. Uh, that, uh, that car has done a very good job there. The 81 driven by Thomas Camanetta from Italy and Matteo Cressoni. Well, the shot there of the wheel departing started to, to fall off and finally departed just as he got to the pits. Here's Dolan then. He's got, uh, Pegasus car, this is a lap down behind him. And now uh, it's not the gap, it's 31 minutes, it's 31 minutes to go. And we're seven eighths of the way through this race. There is your leader in LM. Kamanta, who uh, is a 31-year-old, takes uh, races mainly in the Ferrari Challenge. Meanwhile, disappointment there. The uh, 95, which uh, has had all kinds of adventures today. Oh, so let's see, 80, which uh, led for a considerable uh, time. Is, uh, in the pits. So, uh, different stories for the Kessel cars. And so, Giacomo Pacini's uh, effort is over. And now, uh, Dolan under a lot more pressure from Clean. There he is. 
Somebody, is there somebody running out? 34, maybe uh, running out of fuel. So uh, Michelle Fry. And the gap now between Dolan and uh, Clean. You'll see them together, there they are, Clean in the uh, light blue car. And Clean's got a uh, Ferrari to go by. And again, Simon Dolan under a lot of pressure. Hanging on at the moment. And Gary Hirsch did a good job in that car early on. Remainer uh, Brandella held his end up and now Clean is uh, finishing it off. Man, of course, who uh, raced for her Peugeot at uh, Le Mans, maybe in the twilight of his career, but uh, doing a good job. That was a, I'm sure he should have nipped past then. But the real battle is out on the racetrack as uh, Dolan tries to hold off clear, and Chatin is uh, right there as well in the Alpine. Oh, I think there might be a penalty for that. Well, there's a replay, but uh, well, that's the uh, 59 car getting a service. And uh, currently in fourth. Fourth place in GTC. And Simon Dolan just uh, putting these uh, GT cars between him and uh, Christian uh, Clean. star of Formula One for a while at Red Bull was uh, with Jaguar when it became Red Bull and uh, I remember rightly he was relieved at the drive before the end of the season that was back in uh, 04, uh, must have been back in 06 and uh, Really pushed there by uh, the, the, the Tyrier car, which is now a lap behind, of course. Clean for the new blood by Moran Racing. And this uh, battle continues, and uh, that's it. That's it, Shell. That's the battle for sixth and seventh in the uh, category. But, uh, it's interesting to see what uh, Chatin can do in the Alpine Renault. In third place, and it's everything to play for with 25 minutes uh, remaining. What we want to see really is what's happening at the front. Following uh, this battle, a bit of a, a lock-up from uh, Thierry. Under the white bridge, plunging down the hillside here in Imola. And Simon Dolan, out of your picture, but still hangs on. Max still leading the GTC category. Kamenata still uh, leading the uh, GTLM category. A surprise. And Bertolini has closed up a little bit. He's now 17 seconds behind. This is still this uh, battle for sixth and seventh. Break problems, remember, for Tristan Gomedy. So 
Simon Dolan hanging on at the front of the field. Now we're uh, back with them. And uh, there you see uh, Clean. Again with the GTC cars in the way. And uh, stop go for 94. Won't worry about that. That's a, a GTC car. I think that was for that manoeuvre we saw coming into the pits, wasn't it? Three minute penalty. Back to that sixth and seventh battle. And look at Dolan now under more pressure. 23 minutes remaining. Can he hang on? And a clean sort of lining, trying to line him up there. But he's not giving him any room. And now there's a, another Russian Ferrari to be uh, passed as they go past the pitch of the Russian Ferrari. Has he seen them? Yes, I think he has. Just see inches past really and clean's got a run on him and clean trying around the outside I'm not sure you can do it there but they're side by side and clean definitely had the nose ahead and he does it and christian clean goes into the lead and again simon dolan has to give way to a professional driver now uh, captain changes to uh, keep up with this uh, big battle at the front So, the New Blood team doing a great job here. They run a very good strategy. Christian Clean, 31 years old these days. He started pretty early. He, had a, he was in uh, Formula One at a, a very young age. Gary Hirsch and uh, Robin Brandella Hirsch and Brandella, their job is done. Now it's a matter of clean, just uh, hanging on, but uh, let's not forget the uh, Signatech Alpine there, the 8450, following the numbers they used to have those Le Mans cars all those years ago. And uh, he's not out of the mix yet. And the Alpine there closing up on them. And uh, we could have an absolutely grandstand finish here as that uh, clean gets hung up behind the back of a GT car. And certainly uh, the 36 doing a, a great job, being very impressed by this, uh, this uh, young man, Paul Loup Chatin. Okay, he was the champion last year in the uh, LMPC class that we don't have anymore here. And uh, Simon Dolan under pressure from uh, from Ruchetta. And this is the, the battle then for second place, but uh, ultimately could be the uh, battle for the lead. And uh, Dolan under pressure again. He will surely learn from all this, the 38-year-old uh, entrepreneur. Bertolini closing up on the, the 81 car for the lead of GTLM. Will there be uh, only 20 minutes remaining? But uh, what, a, what a race we've had here. And uh, changing fortunes. Now you want to watch out for that Russian BMW. And uh, certainly clean, not dropping Dolan, is he? Dolan hanging in there, just 1.2 seconds behind. Three of them covered by only two seconds with the 19 minutes of racing uh, to go. The rest of the uh, 
LMP2 cars now, a lap down, it's all about these three. Thirty-four car down in ninth, ninth place after its uh, problems. Dolan goes through the picture. Chata. Sneaking suspicion that uh, the Alpine uh, may have to uh, do a splash and dash. One point one seconds between the pair of them at the moment. Cleon then uh, remains in the lead. One point uh, seven seconds now between him and uh, Simon Dolan. There's uh, Chata. And he does. In he comes. And uh, that's going to take the pressure off uh, Simon Dolan, at least for uh, second place. And he'll stop on his marks. And uh, probably we'll see how long it takes. Start the stopwatch. Get uh, some water. Quite a bit of fuel going in there. The fuel still going in. And now it, will it fire up? Yes, it does. Stop for about 16 or 17 seconds. And I don't think he'll, he'll make that up. And it drops him back to fourth place. And sorry, I said that uh, it was about uh, just those first three, but uh, in fact, they were cycling through the uh, timing and scoring. And uh, Chata is also on the, uh, the same lap. So it's clear, and then in the lead by now three seconds, he's widened the gap out. Capillier is in uh, third place, and then uh, Chata. And then in the fifth spot will be Tom Kimber Smith, but he is a lap down. Bertolini still closing, closing, closing on the 81. It's now just uh, 7.6 seconds. And uh, it's taking about three quarters of a lap. Or three quarters of a second of a lap off uh, Clemnatter. In the GTC, Mac is uh, the uh, young Danish guy is well in the lead of that now. And Markazov second. Another Russian lady kid in third place. And uh, now moved up to fourth in the GTC is uh, Alex Brundle, who's at the wheel of uh, the McLaren. More used to seeing him driving one of these LMP. LMP2 cars, so the McLaren into uh, fourth place, and the uh, out on circuit, out of your sight, and Aston Martin, the, the Aston Martin, had stopped, but uh, is going again. So, Cleon flashing his lights, finding his way through. so-called Morgan Judd. So the one non, uh, non Nissan powered car in the lead. This will be good for, for John Judd, junior and senior, with their BMW based motor. There's uh, Capillier. 
He hasn't given up the fight quite yet. Dolan hanging on really to Cleon. The, the gap back to the Sebastian Loeb racing entry. Sometimes see them in this championship with an Audi as well in the GTC. And just looking at Alex Brundle's times, he's, he's lapping quicker or well, at the same pace as the guy who's leading the class. Going clear and working his way through the traffic. Can't afford any mistakes here. Simon Dolan will be back at him there. Simon in the, the white, uh, red, black car. Again, he's got to find his way Fast and Ferraris in the final 13 minutes of this race. It's not all over yet. And uh, Dolan certainly working his way through the traffic well. Disappointment at Silverstone, that big shunt. Came back and had a good result at Spa in the WEC round. Disappointment here a year ago when they were leading, didn't get this far then. there new blood by Morand with a Christian cleaner run a, a nice strategy in this car put their fastest guy in last 12 minutes remaining and he's just uh, just pulling that gap out just a few fraction of a second a lap Hugely experienced, of course, Christian. Third at Le Mans back in 2008 for Peugeot. Who's that? Uh, BMW run by Mark Lemmer. And that's had a few adventures today. And I think Simon must have been held up a little bit because uh, suddenly the gap has uh, widened to uh, four seconds. Golf Porsche goes through in a whole gaggle of cars. And I uh, have to say, Caminata in the 81. The uh, Castle Ferrari doing a good job. He's got Bertolini closing in and closing in on him. And Bertolini took the best part of two seconds a lap or two seconds off him on the last lap, but it's still seven seconds. So maybe that 81 can hang on. But uh, in 14th place overall, that looks as if uh, GTC, which was so close in the end at Silverstone. Looks there as if um, younger racer from uh, Denmark is uh, is going to do it. Remember him racing in the UK in uh, Formula Two. Look at Mac. Let's see. Uh, there's the 81. The gap now 6.3 seconds. Bertolini closing in on him. He's taking a lot of time out of him, but only 10 minutes left. He might not do it. There is our GTC leader. In America, in the United Sports Car Series, got the GTD category. And uh, regulations pretty similar, actually. So, Nicole Mack 
for Formula Racing leads uh, GTC. And uh, Simon Dolan just closed up a bit again on uh, Cleon. Two and a half seconds the gap now. Nine minutes uh, remaining. Capillier in uh, third place in the Orica. Chatin in the Orica. Chassis Alpine in uh, fourth. Kimber Smith in fifth. Gomendy down there in sixth after the brake problems. Certainly that car has run beautifully, as you'd expect one of those Ferraris too. And now uh, Clean going past the uh, eighth placed car, leading that category, and uh, under a lot of pressure. And uh, the pits would have told him that he's got uh, Bertolini closing on him all the time. Seeing uh, Simon Dolan quite in the pit. Yes, we saw just Simon then still uh, hanging on. There he is. Uh, maybe he's a little bit closer. And those two, the low car might just be on the same lap, just like what our, our graphic says there. Yes, it is. Now it's uh, working pretty well, that system actually. Just a, a ninth place retirement, of course, big disappointment for Murphy prototypes. And uh, Bertolini reduced the gap to 5.6. Really seen the two together on camera yet. Because what we don't know if uh, how much fuel clean he's got left. And well, he's just having to uh, feather a little bit to uh, keep it in the uh, window so he make it to the finish. Another good result for this uh, team. Bertolini on the prowl, six minutes remaining. So, third place in Silverstone for Clean Hirsch and uh, Brandella. But I'm uh, just working out, I think that this. Uh, they hang on to victory here. Probably put them in the lead of the championship. There's uh, Pierre Kaffer, former Sebring 12-hour uh, winner. And uh, Pierre in fourth place in that Ferrari. In uh, GTLM. Bertolini now closed the gap to uh, 3.9. And it took a massive uh, couple of seconds out of uh, Kamenata. Clean then, just needs to keep it clean for these uh, final five minutes. And there's Dolan though, he only needs to make one mistake at uh, Tapped by GT car, and Simon will be right back on him. There's Clean. There's Dolan. So he sweep round McLaren. Brundle there in the fourth place in that McLaren.
as I said, lapping at the same pace as the leader. And look at this, this is sensation here. Has he run out of fuel? What has happened? Clean, grinds to halt. Is he out of fuel? Maybe Corinne can get down there. And he pulls off. Goodness me, sensation here at Imola and it suddenly swung back in the favour of Jota Racing. And he seems to have a little bit of power. Now he's trying to get it going again. Wait, has it picked up a bit of fuel? I suspect it's a problem with, the, with fuel. Well, and now, it, now the car is going again. Well, what is this all about? Maybe we can find out in just a moment. Only, only three minutes and 38 seconds uh, remaining. Simon Dolan back in the lead. He won't believe this. And I did say just a couple of laps ago, one hiccup, one brush with the GT car. It could all change, but it wasn't that. The car ground to a halt. I suspect that it's having trouble picking up the last few gallons or last gallon or so of fuel for litres, I should say. And Simon Dota now just needs to keep it clean, reel off these final two laps. And despondency, of course, down in that uh, Moran pit. Well, the twists and turns of the European Le Mans series, incredible. Simon Dolan. There he is, working his way through. The man who wrote How to Be a Millionaire without going to university. He hasn't been to a racing university. He's done a great job here. Not having quite the ultimate speed of the pros, but why should he? Just careful of that Porsche. And uh, what a reward this will be for this uh, team from France. Just uh, south of Tunbridge Wells there in uh, Kent. The big shunt at Silverstone. The disappointment here a year ago. And is it all over? Could we see another turn of events? I'm just trying to work out, we don't see it on screen whether Clean is still going. It's shown in fifth place. And here we go. On to the uh, last lap, I think. Simon Dolan, Felipe Albuquerque, what a great job he did. It'll be a great result for Albuquerque after the disappointment of his Audi DTM campaign. And what a boost for him going into Le Mans. And uh, what about Harry Ticknell, who did a great job at the start. And uh, for Sam Hignett, all the boys there, they'll be celebrating tonight. But it's never over until that chequered flag falls. Simon Dolan continuing on his way in the, the Zytec designed by uh, Tim Holloway. And did I just see uh, Bertolini there right on, uh, just overtaking uh, Camarata for the lead of the GT class, all happening here on the last lap. There is the, the McLaren, here is Simon Dolan coming towards the chequered flag. Out on the uh, back of the circuit now. And, uh, whatever is going on there. But let's just concentrate on this. And uh, Simon Dolan. The chequered flag is waiting, they timed it to perfection. And will it be a victory? Yes, it is, of course, for Jota Racing. Jota Racing from Kent after the huge disappointment there of uh, Silverstone. And there's Harry Ticknell celebrating with Felipe Albuquerque. And, well, it all happened, didn't it? Still cars spinning off. And uh, 
Bertolini is going to take that to victory. And he snatched that lead on the uh, last lap from uh, Caminata. San Piero come third. There is Albuquerque. Gives us a thumbs up. Well, yet again, the European Le Mans series has delivered in huge chunks with the excitement right to the very end. And I'd uh, still like to find what happened to uh, Clear, but I'm pretty sure it was out of fuel. So, smiles all round, and uh, lots of hugging, of course. And uh, what a great result, too, for the, uh, the 24 car coming home in uh, second place with Capillier doing uh, such a good job there for uh, Sebastian Loeb racing with uh, driving with uh, Jan Charouz and uh, Chata after the troubles bringing the uh, Alpine uh, Renault into a uh, third place with Tom Kimber Smith up to fourth. Gomedy there in uh, fifth. And then uh, Julian Shell in uh, sixth place. Good result for uh, the 60 car too of uh, Mac. And that amazingly only qualified in, uh, I think they were qualified down in that seventh or eighth place. So, there is our winner cruising. Uh, back to the pits, and he'll be a, a very happy man indeed. After the disappointment of last year, as I said, he peels off into the pits now. And we'll wait for the final classification. So, Simon Dolan with Felipe Albuquerque, the uh, Portuguese driver on loan from Audi and uh, Harry Ticknell, the man who's made the switch from uh, Formula 3 win here in Imola there the Union Jack predominantly on the car, let's see his reaction as he climbs out and he's going to jump up and down arms aloft jumps out of the car, rushes over to the team there's uh, Harry Ticknell all the boys Albuquerque coming in, they've got the Dunlop hats on already. Super happy, super drive, man. Very good. see, uh, oh, there's uh, Sam Hignett coming in. The uh, man who put this team together. And what a drive also from Bertolini, you didn't see much of it. So we were watching this uh, great battle at the front, but a, a superb drive from him. And uh, confirmation. That um, the car which uh, was leading right near the end, Clean, did stop out on circuit. It never made it back, so it won't be classified. In uh, GTLM, Zampieri coming third. Caminata in second. Bertolini in uh, first place. And uh, we might be getting uh, an interview pretty quickly from this. You can just see uh, Kareen Lima down there. She's with, with all her. Simon in the middle, taking on some uh, well-deserved water. So this uh, race uh, swung many ways, but uh, ultimately it was a, a Jota team. And uh, well, look at Simon. He, you can see he's been working hard there. The, uh, the smile says it all. I think there's, there's no Simon. Just uh, waiting to be uh, queued up here. Okay, for LMP2, I'm here with the uh, congratulations, guys. Really good race, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's like wacky races out there. Sometimes there's cars going off everywhere and people stopping. But yeah, I couldn't be happier. Really couldn't be happier. It was uh, my worst first stint ever, and got it all back on the second. So I'm really happy. Yeah, really happy. One word, Felipe. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy. I think um, everything came to us. We, we must admit that we were a bit lucky, but uh, there is no winners without luck. Uh, in the end, we are P1. So super happy with this. This is what we, we need to be here. And uh, happy with uh, Simon. He did a fantastic stint with holding on the pressure and keep it calm. And uh, Harry also did a fantastic job.
Congratulations to all, thank you so much. Thank and you. let's go. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I love that comment, wacky racers. Yeah, it was. And now they're going up to uh, the podium. But, uh, well done, uh, Kareen, for diving in there. And this was the moment he took the uh, checkered flag. So, Simon Dolan, who uh, once worked on a market stall and uh, even lost his driving license when he was a young man. I'm not quite sure what he did. Built up a huge accountancy firm, invested in a lot of companies which uh, became very, very successful and uh, a great day for him. There, the overall classification. See the uh, disappointment for new blood by Morand. SMP Racing, that's uh, the Bertolini Ferrari. And uh, interesting to see down there in 15th place, the uh, GTC car being classified. And uh, there is uh, your top 30. But uh, yes, wacky races. As uh, Simon said, cars flying off everywhere. Cars stopping in the lead. Cars having brake problems. Cars not restarting that might have won it. But of course, Jota didn't have any problems. Simon admitted that his first stint wasn't great, but um, it was good enough. But uh, it was a, a super race. And uh, again, great spotlight on this uh, this championship. And uh, the rules certainly uh, worked uh, in the favor of entertainment today, as we see a fine assortment of uh, trophies there. And uh, just the, the two, of course, for the second place car. So there's only two drivers. And a good result for Jan Charouz, the uh, Czech driver. We've seen him a lot in Aston Martins in the past. And uh, driving there with uh, Capillier, the uh, Le Mans based uh, racer. And Simon has he, he climbed out. Just uh, recap GTC, the uh, 60 car winning and uh, margin there well, it was quite quite a large one from uh, Barkasov and uh, Ladykin. After that three was the uh, GTLM Porsche, with Alan Carroll finishing off in that car. So here they are to uh, take the uh, spoils and uh, national anthem will ring out. British chassis, Japanese engine, tuned by the same people that uh, build the chassis, Bill Gibson's company. Second place. So, uh, Cherouz and Capillier and waiting now for our winners. On a glorious day here. About 24 degrees. Lovely late spring day. And here they come. Simon Dolan up on the podium first. The taller figure of Harry Ticknell and little ultra fit Felipe Albuquerque. He's been to plenty of those. Uh, Audi uh, fitness camps and uh, the design of the car also up there too and a special word for him he's been his project for 10 years and uh, just waiting for that national anthem to be queued up Uh, 
players all round. And it's Alan Nish, by a commentator from early on, who's uh, handing out the trophies. Appreciative crowd, they've seen a great race here. So, champagne sprays, everybody will need to go to the dry cleaners after all this. And uh, the bottle smashed down on the ground for the uh, Alpine team. Well, they had a, a few uh, problems, and there's uh, well, one they're not really going to worry about. But uh, be careful of that glass down there. And uh, more podiums to come, of course, yet. So everybody gets uh, sticky. And uh, we'll get some points coming up in a moment. Remember that. Uh, the uh, Jota boys got no points uh, from the uh, first round, so they're in uh, catch-up mode. Just five rounds to this championship. So there again, the uh, classification. The uh, last gasp, wacky race victory for Jota Sport from uh, Sebastian Loeb Racing, Signatech Alpine. Reeves Motorsport uh, battling back to uh, fourth place. Thierry by uh, TDS Racing, Pegasus. And uh, race performance and the two cars that weren't classified. Murphy, which had the gearbox trouble, and then the car, which we're pretty certain ran out of fuel. GTE, SMP Racing from Kessel. JMW, Jim McWhirter's team, having a good job there with some uh, young drivers not used to this kind of racing. Completing the uh, top three. And AT Racing, Team uh, Sofrev. And uh, then a, the uh, best AF Corsa car in sixth place. And who would ever forecast that? And then the uh, best non-Ferrari, the IMSA Performance uh, Matt Mook car. Number 76 machine, two laps down. And there we've got the uh, excitement. Coming up for a second place there. Certainly uh, did a good job, those two boys. So unfancied to a degree. But, uh, where's Andrea Bertolini? He'll be up there in a moment. And there they are, SMP Racing. And a uh, young lad. Um, must be one of their sons. So everybody gets into place. Bertolini, of course, the factory driver. Camata and Crisoni in the yellow overalls. Crisoni might not be asked to drive a Ginetta again. I think he'll be in big demand for uh, racing Ferraris in the future. Did an excellent job here. So podiums and uh, I'm tucked away in a box and I can't hear the, the PA system so I'm not sure if they're, they're playing the national anthem well, they've all got their hats off so national anthem over Trophies handed out. I think that gentleman's from the, the racetrack owners. Of course, would love to have Grand Prix again. It's the classification for GTC. Formula Racing, surprise uh, 
winners of that from the two SMP cars. And then, uh, as I said, Alex Brundle putting in a good stint uh, in the end in the McLaren to uh, bring that 99 car up to uh, fourth place. So disappointing day all round for uh, Marte Ferrari's uh, AF Corsa team. That little team Formula Racing doing a, an excellent job with those uh, Danish sponsored outfit. General clearing up going on around the circuit. More champagne. <laughs> but one bottle doesn't want to open, though finally is opened. So Ferrari, one, two, three in both of the GT categories. <laughs> Lots of shenanigans going on there. See that again, straight in the face. Sticky old stuff. Only one thing that that's good for, and it's drinking. <laughs> so, fun and games on the podium on what has been a very hectic four hours of Imola. And a uh, little break now, of course, uh, in this uh, championship. There they are for the, uh, the photo. But uh, what a drive from uh, Bertolini, just uh, snatching uh, GT uh, class victory in the closing stages. So it's been a pretty hectic day here. Delighted uh, early on to have uh, Karun Chandok joining me. And I hope I didn't put a curse on him because he never got into the car. And then later on, uh, great words of wisdom from uh, Alan McNish. Always a pleasure to have him uh, uh, joining us. Some more trophies to come. Just a five round championship. As we said, all focused now, moving, of course, over to Le Mans in, uh, with a test uh, weekend coming up in a couple of weeks and the race itself. Of course, it's never over until the, uh, all the scrutineering's been done. So uh, let's hope this is the, the final result. So SMP boys there. But uh, everyone will be back in their workshops, of course. Here we are. Yeah. Podium here for the GTC category. Uh, on the left of uh, the group, a uh, Danish boy that did such a good job and in the middle. Uh, Larson and of course Puccini, very experienced uh, driver, but uh, say that uh, the Danish boy with that form of two uh, experience for three years ago in the UK now he was a teenager certainly was uh, the star man there and uh, we'll see quite a lot, lot more of him in uh, this form of racing caps back on so, a bit of the Danish national anthem and the third and final podium then Mitchell in, hands out the trophies for this one. And, uh, just to confirm, I'm pretty sure that um, the buddy create. Dominic Carr, I think we'll be still leading the uh, championship. Disappointing uh, day, of course, for uh, for Duncan Cameron and uh, Matt Griffin. So uh, 
Bertolini, Slobin and Shaitar will uh, go into the lead of uh, the GTLM after two rounds. It's a champagne sprays here. Team Ukraine wasn't here, so just uh, trying to work out Formula Racing over their third place at uh, the opening round at Silverstone. I think they'll go into the lead of uh, of the uh, GTC category. So uh, well done to them. So they had uh, uh, Anne Magnuson with them at the opening round. So, there we are, that's about it from uh, here in Imola. Exciting race, a race of twists and turns, and a race that the man who won it, the man who financed the winning car and brought along two very good professional drivers called Wacky Races. It, it was a wacky race in many ways, but uh, it was certainly an enjoyable one and a one of many twists and turns. So, for me, thanks to all our crew at Stop and Go, for uh, some great pictures to uh, Kareen Lima for sterling work down in the pits and uh, for uh, Karun Chandok and uh, Anna McNish who join me in the commentary box. It's uh, goodbye and uh, thank you for watching. Bye now.